What is up, YouTube? My Cowboys family here, bringing you guys the latest update on our very own Dallas Cowboys. And of course, as always, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Take a second to hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow us on all social media at My Cowboys Family, and hop in the Discord. Link for that's in the description box down below. As you guys can see some breaking news today for our Dallas Cowboys, on top of other things going on, like the state. Of the Cowboys, the state of the team, press conference, kickoff training camp, kickoff the season. And a lot more too. Some injury updates. Very important stuff here. As we're just on the brink of the first training cra- training camp practice of 2023. That is tomorrow. That's Wednesday. And that's, I think, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. So adjust your clocks accordingly, right? We're going to have some fun with this tomorrow. Probably tomorrow around that time, you're going to see some videos dropping from here at my Cowboys family with some of my two cents, my thoughts about what's going on in training camp, even if it's not even hitting right now, every day counts. So before we get it rolling here, guys, and get into this, we got a lot of news, info, and updates on our Dallas Cowboys right here on my Cowboys family. Before we can get any farther, though, maybe here on MCF, the world goes round because of some of the family members here that keep it going on the nightly here with us. Without further ado, let's go and name like our 90s Cowboys back-to-back winner, sponsor of the week, the great Skeptical, Skeptical fan. fan. Hell yeah. This, the membership man, right? What the, He's back-to-back on the sponsor of the week. Big ups to him. That's the first time he's ever done it. So he's a, he's an OG that's, you know, br- you know, breaking new barriers. But also, currently, he has dominated the membership gifting, which is a new function here on our channel. So he's got the month of, uh, of, of May, month of June. And he's closing in on the month of July here with a record number of gifted memberships. So truly appreciate you, Skeptical Fan who also is part of that star level membership. We'll shout everybody out in a minute. Also shouting out Mark Hovsepian. Bossing that stream around with 47 Hell points. Hell yeah. Much love to him. He's also the leader currently to try to get that sponsor of the week and break the streak of Skeptical Fan. Last night, Mark Hovsepian, you know, put in a little bit and is in first place currently on the overall board. But then we also have the Cash App Crown, and that is worn right now by the Q-Man, Justin Quarles. Much love to him. We do have a leader, though, on that side of things, and... It is Jason Renfro, who, by the way, pre-stream, he dropped a dollar holler and a Go Cowboys in the cash app. So he jumped up on that board a little bit. Also, Dwayne Broussard, he's in uh, the thanks side of things. He gave a little thanks for one of our videos earlier today on Trayvon Diggs. So much love to him. He's on the board as well. And we've got a new membership in the house here, in the silver level membership by Bobby Bottles. Much Ooh, love to him. Thank he was, you, Bobby. He was there way before. Now he's back in it. We, you know, we had, we had a little downtime with our memberships. Appreciate everybody who's jumping back into their levels and, and keeping it rocking here on the on the nightly here on My Cowboys Family. So, yeah, much love. Hey, hey baby, also much love to your $2 hauler, too, pre-stream. Just want to throw that in there. Appreciate everybody here helping us, and especially 
all the levels of membership, navy, blue, silver, and star, and the over everything, which is empty right now. But we always shout out the star level members, and you're going to know some of these names. Skeptical Fan, Jason Renfro, Dwayne Broussard, of course, the great Mary Alvarez, and all the way on the other side of the earth in Australia, LC, Lincoln Kane, repping that star over everything. Much love to the star level membership crew. Every, every Friday, we'll shout out you know the, the silver level as well. And that's when Bobby Bottles will be shouted out this Friday. So appreciate everybody in the membership and also you know dropping the super chats, dropping the jumping into membership like Bobby Bottles, gifting memberships, but also the thanks button. And there's four other ways of helping out the channel. And we'll get to that in a minute because first we got to open the door for Abe Shepard, who's here rocking it with us with a five on it. The Thank you so much, Abe. Dollar appreciate holler. you. First one in stream for tonight. You Big know what one tonight. Said? Let me know. Love your channel. Great job, guys. Thank you, Abe. Appreciate yes. you. And Much you know, love. Well, obviously, you know, especially during these uh, training camp days, uh, you know, we have quite a bit of things to get into <laughs> because, oh, well, there's uh, a few more Cowboys on the roster to speak about as oh, well. Yeah. So. And, and hey, I'm loving it. I know it's a little bit, you know, a little overwhelming sometimes, but hey, we're going to break it down so everyone gets every piece of the puzzle together. And, and side now. note, yes, I, I know that we're not the only ones who are just. The tiniest bit disappointed that when we saw the Cowboys signed to a bit. Oh, it was Trayvon. Like, nothing wrong with <laughs> really? it. Just that, just that, you know, a lot of us were hoping it was going to be Zach Martin. That's all I'm saying. You know, just to to get that maybe behind us, right? So, but of course, you know, there's a little bit more than that going on. So, we'll, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But of course, like we were saying here in just yes, a second. Yes, the A, by the way. A variety of other ways to show the love and the support here to the channel. You have the Cash App, Money Sign My Cowboys Family, the Venmo at My-Cowboys-Family, the regular PayPal link, and last but not least, the Streamlabs link lets your comments show up on screen just like a super chat. Oh yeah, and by the way, baby, I know that we talked about... Thank you to... Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Rolando Rodriguez, Aztec Aguilar 04, West Texas Cowboy... Skeptical fan, always staying skeptical. Loyal to Houston, what's up? We have Cowboy Nation Danny in the house. Bruce got the toxic juice. Stephen White. You see, we have Bobby Bottles, what's up? Colleen K. Abe Shepard representing. Scorpio. Cactus G. Henry Hayes. Trying to go back. Monroe Gadet. Sir Spade Sam. The lunatic. Hey. Hold up, bitch, Cowboys. The lunatic. I, I wish I could get back to every single person that commented today. It's been a busy day, so, you know, I'll definitely get to all the comments, but uh, some of you guys just jump in here and we discuss it live. We have Cameron, Mari Roberts, Dwayne Broussard, the top dog, Big Dal 8604. Let me see. Jason Renfro. Yeah. Thomas Garrett, the superior Garrett. Freedom first. Coming back down. Perfect. So awesome. So, and yes, guys, let us know if you're going to be out there at training camp like uh, Danny in the house, right? He's going to be out there tomorrow. Have fun. Enjoy. Say hi to our Cowboys for us all, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for this uh, kickoff tomorrow for training camp. But I'm even more excited for how we're going to do the rest of this season. It, it's a lot of it starts right now, right here. Right. You know, that's actually a, a good point. Uh, I'm just going to read this one quick comment yeah. and then I'll hand it over to you just because uh, I know we jumped the gun a little bit here. But Scorpius said something tells me that Diggs and his agent wanted to hurry on a deal because of Zach Martin's holdout. Hmm. Basically that Diggs side thinks that he wouldn't have gotten a deal worked hmm. out if he hadn't pushed for it now. Because if Zach Martin gets his thing done, the Cowboys are going to kind of like ignore the him. Well, the, the, the Cowboys, the front office, <laughs> and as we know, a.k.a. usually... The clown show. They they will say, "Well, we paid Zach Martin, so we can't. We gotta we gotta push Trayvon Diggs' contract the next year." Surely the squeaky wheel gets the grease yeah. in Dallas. So <laughs> I'll tell you, you scream louder, you get you get the money. So look, Trayvon Diggs rushing to get this done. Look, we'll talk about it. I don't want to even jump the gun yet because I do want to go into details. Some stuff I haven't heard anybody talk about that we have here to talk about here about Trayvon Diggs and others and other uh, yeah. stories. And Monroe Gadet, right you know, put a, put a pin in that one. Uh, because, yes, that, that was kind of the exact same thing that we thought when we heard about some other deals that happened throughout the NFL today. So, but baby, yeah, yeah, we'll let me go ahead it. first, hand it off well, to you. What's going on throughout the NFL and, and just, everywhere else? And just a real quick about the clown show. Again, today actually was a good thing. It, trust me, this deal, I actually like it. So I can't call him the no, clown I'm not, show I'm not today. Upset. I'm not no, no, upset. no. I'm not saying. I don't know. You know, I know people are like, well, it should have been somebody else. Or should be. 
it should have been Trayvon Diggs. He earned the money. He actually is the guy that is a free agent, unrestricted next year, unless he tag him. Obviously, the Cowboys want to tag somebody else, so they wanted to get this deal done now. So I don't think it's necessarily a competition. It doesn't have to be a one or the other. But like I said, I it would have been nice to get some of the more like dramatic situations out of the way with like the whole Zach Martin thing but this is absolutely a key piece to what we're trying I, to build here I do want to give a, I do want to give you one little side note and I think that's what this whole thing comes down to Zach when is Zach Martin like truly push for the new deal I mean it was a couple days ago Trayvon Diggs has been pushing this the whole offseason. So, yeah, we, this sounds like it's been yeah. percolating behind the scenes. Trayvon Diggs' deal was getting done slowly, all right, by by the by the Joneses and by his side. And the, the Zach Martin thing is recent. So it's going to take a little more time to get that one ironed out. But trust me, sooner or later, that's my guess, and it's almost my prediction, my guarantee, that he will be back sooner than later, within a week, in training camp at the latest. But we'll see. I don't want to give the false information. It could sour. It could get worse. We'll talk about it all here tonight on my Cowboys family. So, ready to roll in? Yeah, this thing we got go. a lot, of, a lot of news, a lot of different news from all different kinds of things. Our, our Cowboys and NFL news. So, let's start off with Pro Bowl real quick. Because actually, this is affecting MCF. Uh, Orlando, Florida, has been chosen to host the 2024 Pro Bowl games. No, God, no more Pro Bowl like tournament, like no more Pro Bowl like actual game, but it's the games. Right? All these flag football and other kind of mm-hmm. tournament stuff. It's going to be at Camping World Stadium. It's going to be on Sunday, February 4th, 2024. It will be returning the skills challenges featuring 88 players from the AFC and the NFC culminating in a flag football game. I do think this is a better <laughs> way to go as far as like activities. Well, the key here is that for us, MCF, we're like an hour away. We're going to be driving over there and getting some some on-the-ground footage. Hopefully, no Cowboys are there because they're getting ready for the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. That's what I, I don't want to see no Cowboys in the Pro Bowl. You're, you're only like two hours away. If you, you know, I, I know it's it's a little bit more of a stretch, yeah. but if you're out in Lakeland, that that would that's be the, that. That's not even that. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like an it's, hour as well. It's like, it's like similar. Yeah, true. I mean, it just depends. It's, it's the Disney area, I think, is where they usually go. So, closer out to that direction, right? So, we're all close by. You may... You may see the family. Hey, we've gone a couple days in a row out there too. With some one day with the kids, one day we took off for you know all. Yeah, of us I remember. Went. Yeah, I know. Uh, once it was like you, me, and Mosh. Yeah, Mosh. Once you went the, like just you with the kids. One yeah. day we went all of us together. Yeah. One time we went like just you and me. You know, like it just you know it's it. And every single hey. time we went, it was awesome. <laughs> and every single time, I can't help but refer, you know. Yeah, the Emmett Smith the Emmett situation. Smith. Oh, that was Never sad. Forget. The, Never the jersey you almost had the shirt the, the shirt jersey you had. <laughs> Listen. We will talk about it when we get closer to that. And listen, I'm going to say this again because we got five, as you can see on my shirt, but we want six. Mm -hmm. We need six. We got to get six and beyond. But no matter what happens, one Cowboy, 20 Cowboys, or zero Cowboys because they're on the Super Bowl, we will definitely be at the Pro Bowl for at least a day or two of those practices and festivities behind the scenes. And yeah, maybe we may just put up some kind of a meet and greet, you know, since it's only an hour from us. That'll be fun to do there, right there at the Pro Bowl area. (laughs) <laughs> well, actually, from from the, I I do too, but we'll have a lot of cowboy fans represented. Oh yeah, I, I I do say you know where they practice. I guess they used to practice was in the Disney area, but I don't know what they're gonna do when they have these games. Are they gonna still do stuff with the fans and stuff, or are they gonna just you know are they going to just show up on Camping World Field or Stadium because that is like another forty five minutes away from. So it is kind of two hours from us actually. When you look at the stadium, but if you look at where they practice, it's about an hour from us. It's yeah. literally that much of a difference. So. You know, we'll see. We'll see how this uh, shows up, but um, it's good to see it back in Orlando, and, and it's close to where we live, and we yeah, can kind of partake in those festivities. Yeah. Now, I will say one last thing: Peyton Manning and Eli Manning will be returning as head coaches of the AFC and NFC for the 2024 Pro Bowl games. It was kind of a fun thing they did last year. Um, you know, they'll do it again. Now, of course, you know Peyton's AFC, Eli's NFC for obvious reasons. Now. Get to, we're done with the Pro Bowl stuff. Now let's get to NFL stuff and let's talk about a uniform. Another uniform, the Broncos. They unveiled a new snow-capped white alternate helmet. Which again, we we had the we, we had the freshest, the cleanest white helmets with that with that just a plain navy blue star. That's the '60s throwback. Now everyone's gonna copy us. <laughs> but look, they, we talked about the Browns turning their helmets white. Other teams doing the the the, the white out or whatever. Now we got a snow cap <laughs> in in Denver. They have a white alternate helmet. It's going to be worn this year with the orange alternate jerseys. So they're going all orange with that. And, and the helmet's going to be the old D, that old D, <laughs> old Denver D with the little Bronco jumping through the D. So 
there you go, guys. A little update on more jersey changes. And, you know, I mean, by the end of the year, we're going to have like every team's going to have 17 different jerseys and helmets. It feels like it. Speaking of all the teams in the NFL. I guess guys like to play dress up, too. <laughs> we do like to rep our team's colors. But, damn, some of these teams have like 16 colors. Let's talk about the dumbest, the stupidest. NFL fans in the, in, in the league right now. Which is which group would be it? Now, you would probably, you know, a lot of people think it's the, probably say the Cowboys because we're delusional, right? We think we're going to win the Super Bowl every year. It's been 27 fucking years. Right. But the Giants, yes, the New York football Giants were ranked as the least intelligent fan base of the entire NFL, guys. This is a, a study done by gambling.com. I'm sorry, gambling.com. And, I mean, I could look at this list as, you know, the Giants were the dumbest, right? The Eagles were the, Basically, the 14th dumbest on the list here. And all the way, when it comes to the most intelligent fan bases, the Bills, the Buffalo Bills were number one with the Browns right behind them. That's weird. The Buccaneers, that's really weird. Behind them, the Chiefs, the Packers. And in sixth place, yes, our Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we're not that stupid. We may be a little delusional, but we're not that dumb. <laughs> sixth uh, you know, most uh, intelligent the fan base. we're not base. top five, I'll give this list a tiny <laughs> When it comes credit. to the dumbest group? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're we're almost top five in the smartest side of things. So congrats, family. We're a smart bunch. Yeah. Go yeah. Cowboys. And <laughs> Now, I'm not going to waste too much time on those things. We'll jump in the chat and catch you guys. You guys have something to say. You know how to interrupt us with drops of love or knowledge or whatever. Yeah, but Trayvon wasn't the only one getting deals done no, today. No, There's no. a lot of uh, there was two other, NFL yeah. deals that happened that are, I say, yeah. Cowboy adjacent in well, some way. There were two way. big deals that went down. Um, outside of outside of Dallas, with big name players, we'll start with you know when you when you thought when you think about what's going on in Dallas, no Zeke, got Pollard right. We got a we got him for the one year tag, and we're gonna talk about the injury situation for him in a minute. But Saquon Barkley, guys, yes, yeah, Saquon, Saquon Barkley uh, today surprisingly, I mean early in the crack of dawn this morning, signed and agreed to a deal with the Giants. New terms of this deal, a one year deal hmm. with up to eleven million dollars. For the one year. Now, he was going to get 10.1 like 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 Tony Pollard. And he said no. So he got another $900,000 to max it out. So that's kind of the way he's doing this to kind of get a chance to beat the franchise tag. He does also get a $2 million signing bonus. The bottom line is Saquon Barkley is going to be in a, a training camp for the Giants. And we will see him week one. Good. No excuse from the, J, from the G spots. I mean okay. the G men. And... Again, for the Giants, Saquon Barkley, this is definitely not the long-term answer that the Giants or Barkley wanted. It's a short-term situation, almost like a prove-it deal in a way. I mean, it feels very similar to a franchise tag, yeah, just by a slightly different yeah. uh, name or rule set. Like, it's <laughs> a basically a glorified franchise well, tag. <laughs> there's, there's other details, which kind of make it a little bit more than just a million dollars more. But here's the thing, guys. So the Giants missed, of course, the deadline to extend Saquon Barkley. Um, they were out from like 14 million. Remember? Now he's getting 11, yeah. but he's getting 14 over like a span of three or four or five years. Here he's getting 11 for one year. So the tag again, 10.1 million. He basically gets an extra million dollars on this deal, right? Plus any more incentives on top of that, any more bonuses after that. We know it's two million, so it's about 13 million with the bonus. Saquon Barkley got the extra one million dollar incentive deal added to his to his total contract there. But he also did not get a no franchise tag clause. Remember, he wanted to kind of push for that. He said, yeah. I don't want to be tagged next year. Guess what? The Giants said, no, if we're going to give you this deal the way it's structured and basically 13, but it's like one year deal. It's kind you gotta of. got to let us tag you. Got to let us year. tag you next year if possible. And, you know, maybe they say they're going to work something out with them and there'll be hopefully something worked out between the Giants and, the, and Saquon that's in their minds. We'll see. That sounds like another problem next year, pushing the, kicking the can down the road a little bit. But the Giants basically can tag them after this season. Um, you know, on, on the franchise tag once again. And a report that came out on Saquon Barkley that the Miami Dolphins reportedly tried to trade for Saquon Barkley. It sounds like right now wow. he, yeah, it sounds like right now he is, um, I mean, not to him, but the Dolphins are looking at someone like more now, like Dalvin Cook, who's still out there floating around. So we'll see what happens. Uh, which again, makes sense for them. Yeah, no, I mean, they need a running back. They were trying to get Barkley. Now they're looking, they're re-looking at Dalvin Cook. So now I will say the compensation update on this situation for Saquon Barkley's new one-year deal with the Giants again. It is what it, it's funny because it's ten point one million of that. Remember on a on a uh, trans on a franchise tag, it's fully guaranteed. This is a one-year deal. Is it fully guaranteed? Yes. Well, it's not fully guaranteed. It's ten point one million dollars 
fully guaranteed. Uh, I guess that's not fully. One point one, ten point one million dollars. So obviously there's a not fully guaranteed. It's tag basically risk. it's a basically a tag uh, with incentives, and the deal includes again a million dollars of incentives, an equal amount of of. Uh, uh, another million dollars paid for the if he gets thirteen hundred rushing yards, eleven touchdowns, and sixty five receptions. I honestly, it sounds like Saquon basically, you know, forwent the franchise tag for the ability to earn a little bit more money and bet on himself. But it sounds like if there is a scenario where he gets the more almost the entirety of his contract outside of like Super Bowl things you know what i mean mm-hmm. if he meets these numbers or these stats and stuff it's gonna be very hard for the giants to turn around and not and, pay him yeah. yeah but like you said they have that franchise tag still in their back pocket so really i think saquon just kicked that can yeah. it feels like a draw <laughs> and, that, I mean? and that's probably the best it just delays it one more year like the, the actual hard choice but the thing is yeah he caved and honestly yeah it, it feels was, like uh, but he had I no choice how much that running back discussion that yeah. they all had together made him realize like look i either take the money that is being offered to me now, or I end up screwing myself. Or, you know, the thing is, they want to talk to the agents. They want to make sure they push something different. But there's no time for that now. That's for next year. So that's why he's pushing us down the line, I think, a little bit. So, hey, listen, there's also the injury issue with him. If he gets banged up or injured, he ain't hitting any of these incentives. He'll get his $10 million, like like, like Pollard. He'll get his $10.1 million, but he's not going to get the incentives. He might not get his full contract, you know, paid out, the $11 million. And then the Giants will go the other way on him next year instead of getting that 14 million a year for like three or four years or four years he didn't want it he's rolling the dice on himself as a running back and in, you know in a league that there's a lot of injured running back sometimes so got to be careful but we'll we can see what happens with saquon now another running back in the nfl the only one left that has not signed a deal basically or signed with their team is josh jacobs the leading running back rusher from last season 2022 development leaves him as the only franchise tag player currently not in training camp oof now, really quickly, I'm going to get to the other big story. But first, the Saints made a couple moves. One guy, we know, he, he's coming back to the two guys. Actually, both guys are going back to the Saints. Jimmy Graham, old man Graham, mm-hmm. signed a one-year deal with the Saints. He spent his first five years in the league with the Saints, with the New Orleans Saints. So another player, which I only mentioned this guy because he's a guard. And he used to be a good guard. He's not a good guard anymore. He's too old. But Trey Turner. Saints are signing and bringing him back. He used to play with the Saints. He's a former Pro Bowler to a one-year deal as well. He's from New Orleans, and he played at LSU. So there you go. Another homecoming, I guess. I guess he didn't play for them, but he's, he only played for the Panthers. But he's from New Orleans, my fault, and he played at LSU. By the way, one last thing, uh, the Niners. GM John Lynch said quarterback Brock Purdy underwent offseason elbow surgery. He's been cleared without restrictions, and he's ready to go in training camp. No PUP list for him, no PUP list. For, for uh, Brock Purdy. We'll get our revenge on him hopefully sooner than later. I know we got a game against him, week five or whatever. I want to get it in the playoffs. Now, talk about a quarterback there. We go a big quarterback signing, which is going to affect the situation, you can say, when it comes to our quarterback, Dak Prescott. Yep. Yes. The next domino has fallen. The Chargers' Justin Herbert reached an agreement today on a landmark, huge five year deal, $262.5 million extension. Keeps him. There to 2029. First and foremost, we got Jangly Echoes. Dropping that five on it. Ooh, shout out to you, yeah. Jangly. Jangly on the board. I'm going to put him up there in a tie with uh, with Abe Shepard. What did Jangly have to say? Unfortunately, we live in a pass-happy league. Hmm. It is what it is. Draft another running back in 2024 and just call it a day. Sign CD, Steele, and Martin. And then, Micah Parsons. <laughs> Well, again, so. we're gonna actually go through that list when we get to Trayvon. But I love what you're bringing to the table here about the, about the, you know, I'm gonna talk about the pass happiness of this league and the running back situation. See, Terrence Steele and Parsons are definitely well. I feel like next year's problems in the sense of we have to play out this season yeah. uh, because remember the reason that Terrence Steele hasn't really been locked down in a more long term sense was injury. that injury. So I am more on the happy side that the Cowboys didn't dump and invest some kind of long-term contract Blindly, and a player that I we think. still want to be sure that he's going to be healthy, which obviously all seems to be heading towards that direction. We'll talk about we'll talk about that in a minute. But, but we obviously didn't know that <laughs> a few months ago and again, when all that was working Again, out, even, so. even if it is or isn't, we still got to see how he perform, how Trevor Steele performs on the field after injury. But like yeah, like being good Zach to go, Martin, being, being healthy is one thing. Being healthy and being able to play like he did is another thing. I got to see he had two ligaments torn, MCL and ACL on the left leg, so... I wouldn't sign Terrence Steele yet. Like you said, I agree with you. And and I guess, Micah, you cannot sign Micah until next year, as, exactly. as, as Jangley knows. 
But the other guys, hell yeah. We need to get Zach Martin giving his money. You gotta give CeeDee Lamb his money. Make what about happen. what about Tyler Biotish? Anyone? Hello? Anyone? True. <laughs> I'm just saying look, he's also it, it, look, he lots of people's <laughs> lot of contracts maybe get lost in that shuffle. But I do have to very quickly, is that an Ahigao of Ahsoka Tana Chinkly Echoes? That's because I, I, I just looked at it again and I'm just like, oh, okay. Um Who is that? Don't don't worry is about it. Your... Da, 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 don't worry about it. <laughs> the less you know the better at this point. Oh, um boy. Again, so real quick, let me go ahead, uh, <laughs> go through some of the comments here in the chat. Um, no, I was about to hit up the, the quarterback, Justin yeah, Herbert. Yeah, Scorpio, but... an error from YouTube. I'm not sure what's going on there, but hmm. stream's showing up okay on my side. So That's good on my side, too. On my, Big my Dow chat, said, yeah. Herbert better get all the slander that Dak got. <laughs> uh, you know he won't. I'll leave it at that. But you know he won't. Actually, Mr. MCM and I had a little behind-the-scenes discussion of, you know, oh, wow, you know, it was a bit risky there, signing him to a long-term deal with Kellen Moore still there. And I mm. pointed out to Mr. MCF, I'm like, well, they know they want Herbert regardless 100% because they're paying him based off of a performance that he had already yeah, but done. You know well, what I mean? Well, let's, let's Worst talk- case scenario, though, I'm just saying, they'll give Kellen Moore the boot <laughs> long before they give Herbert any shit. But listen, let's talk about this because it does affect Dak Prescott's contract if he stays in Dallas. And that's up to the Joneses, to up to Jerry, you know, Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones. And Stephen Jones to see if they want to keep Dak Prescott, extend him. Now it doesn't sound like it's going to happen now. It sounds like they're going to try to work on that maybe next year. They got to give. I guess they're giving him one more year for Dak Prescott under McCarthy in a West Coast styled offense and see where he falls on that. But now let's talk about Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert agreed to this five year deal, two hundred and sixty two point five million dollar extension that keeps him with the Chargers until twenty twenty nine. The deal gets done. Before their first training camp practice, which kicks off the same as us Wednesday, tomorrow. Six years. Listen to this, guys. Please listen to this. Tell me what you all think. Let me fix myself here. Six years ago. Six years. That's it. So six years ago, Derek Carr was the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. He was getting paid an average of $25 million per year. We're now more than double that number as, you know, the, the new, yeah, that, the that new, the new like high. rookie numbers now. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like. Now it's like, please, like, please, we wish. But we've been saying this here in MCF for years. Before, three years before Dak got his contract, we talked about that here. Talking about how the quarterback quarterback market is not about winning Super Bowls or how much they deserve it or don't deserve it. It's about if you're a franchise quarterback, you're going to get paid the big bucks wherever it is at that point. And we even said it in a year and a half or two years, Dak will be probably out of the top 10. He's about to be out the top 10 when it comes to paid, average per year quarterback getting paid. So, again, of course, Will he sign another contract? That will change the numbers. But for now, $25 million was the big deal to sign six years ago. Now, $50 million plus is the big deal. Jalen Hurts, remember this, guys. Jalen Hurts was the highest paid quarterback per year average in NFL history for exactly 10 days. If you remember that, right? Because then shortly after this offseason, he got his 10 day, he got his pay. Lamar Jackson got his huge deal with the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson was the highest paid. That was 10 days. Lamar Jackson has been the highest paid quarterback per year in average money in NFL history for the last 89 days. A, a day short of three months because today Justin Herbert broke that record. You guys feel what's going on here? It's going to keep going up. And it's, I don't know when it's going to stop, but it's still going up. The quarterback, you say I said it, passing league. There you go. So Joe Burrow is still hanging around. And so is, of course, the extension possibility for Dak Prescott if Joe Burrow's deal. Gets done, signed, sealed, and delivered before Dak Prescott's extension gets done. Then Dak will fall out of the top ten in average annual value among quarterbacks. But at the same time, now you when Dak's going to come to the table, he's going to come to the table for one of those forty-seven to fifty-two million dollar deals right there, at least. Gird your loins. Yep. But outside of that, too, though, I'm still a little conflicted on when the Cowboys should even sit down and negotiate with Dak for a variety of reasons. I don't want to get into it like too too long, but. I could see the Cowboys not wanting to mess with Dak's contract until the end of the season, is what I'm saying. I, I Listen, the Cowboys have everything in place for this. They plan for this. Next year, it's a $60 million hit, so they better figure something out. Mm. Now, uh, whether it's pushing money forward and, and not re-signing him or signing him to an extension and now easily push, pushing money forward. Now, I just want to finish saying one last thing. Remember this, guys. Dak Prescott, you guys remember how long it has been since he signed it? It's been about two years. Like I said, two years, he's going to be out of the top 10 when Burrow signs. So Dak signed two years ago. This is how the quarterback market works. And we said this to you guys for five, six years we've been here. 
40 million a dollar 40 million a year now a 40 million dollar a year quarterback is the new 20 million dollar a year quarterback back when Dak signed you know Dak got the 40 and the 20 million dollar guys were like you know getting on the cheaper end of quarterback pay now 40 million is the cheaper end of quarterback pay and you know <laughs> 50 plus is the uh the newest franchise i'm not gonna say the best just the newest franchise quarterbacks that are getting paid remember jerry jones if he's had his mind made up about dak then what are you doing if, you, if you're not sure that's one thing but if you got your mind made up like we did three years before he got the deal signed in dallas this would have been a lot easier for the cowboys they just exactly. they, they just too they wait too long on every single freaking deal i will say except for maybe the one that they did today which they still waited long but it worked out for them sometimes it, it works out horribly but when it comes to um when it comes to herbert he jumps from an average listen to this guys five million dollars per year quarterback to 52.5 over 52 million dollars a year is what his average jumps to now remember his full i'm, I'm gonna go through these numbers in a little more detail but he's 25 wins in his career 25 wins 24 losses in the regular season he's 0-1 in the playoffs and i'll get into that a little bit more but a lot of big numbers for this big deal for justin herbert and again when you break it down in year one right of this deal he gets a hundred million dollars <laughs> <laughs> that's topping the previous high of 80 million which was very recent doc used to be on top of this like, I feel like 78 buy a small country with that <laughs> amount of money but herbert his five-year extension includes 133.7 million dollars fully guaranteed that's a lot but he has 193 million dollars when you add it all together with the injury guarantees and it springs to about 218.7 million dollars guaranteed so it's really two the 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 total new guarantees for justin herbert 185 million dollars and he has listen he has 14,089 career passing yards what three years right that's the third most in a three-year span without a playoff win so great numbers, but no playoff wins. Hmm. Hmm. Now, only Matthew Stafford and Drew Brees had higher passing marks, but they both won, you know, higher higher passing yardage at this point of their career. Only those two guys. Of course, both guys did win a Super Bowl at some point in their careers. Drew Brees a lot, a lot earlier, I would say. Stafford a lot later. But when you look at the career playoff wins for Justin Herbert, Tim Tebow has won. Daniel Jones has won. Justin Herbert has never won a playoff game. You know, Dak Prescott's won two of these. He's been uh, he's been on the team that's won two. All right, and we've been to the playoffs a lot more. Again, I know the percentage. I know it's Dak's been in the league a lot longer, but percentage wise, Dak uh, he's like fifty five percent of the time making the playoffs. Herbert thirty three percent of the time. So look, Herbert also had a twenty seven nothing lead in the playoffs. Remember that one? Oh yeah, they blew it. He lost that game. Well, oh, they lost that game. And he also has 10 fourth quarter interceptions. He's definitely not, doesn't seem to be the guy that's going to pull out every game there consistently for Justin Herbert. So when you dare compare Dak Prescott to Herbert or Josh Allen to, 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 to Dak Prescott, take a look at all the stats. Not just cherry picking the ones you like, or even the, for the Dak lovers out there, don't cherry pick the ones Dak is, is only good at. They got good, they're all in the same range, is my point. And yet Dak somehow always gets spit out to the bottom by our own fans sometimes. What bullshit, right? Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert with no playoff wins and a overall now we're adding that playoff loss 25 and 25 record he's a 500 quarterback right now in three years and he gets a record 262 plus million dollars boom the court it's great to be a quarterback huh so speaking of quarterbacks and I'll leave Dak up there as well you know we talked about I mean I would love to hear what the chat has to say about you know about this but I know that well I don't know how long it's going to be for the doggy, but anyway, I know the, the wife's about the dog outside right now, but I do, I'm going to say one last thing here related to, I guess, Dak Prescott, but Netflix, who again has that quarterback show, we saw it, if you guys watched it, I don't know if you guys watched it yet, it was very good, uh, you know, Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, uh, what was his name from the Falcons, uh, I can't believe I forgot his name, uh, Mariota. Mariota, Marcus Mariota, their, their, Netflix is now looking for three more quarterbacks for this season. And supposedly they asked Bears quarterback Justin Fields about appearing in season two of the quarterback series, and he declined. He said he's on it. He's not interested. You know, I respect that. That's a guy trying to focus on what he got to do instead of being on camera. It was recently revealed that the Rams' Matthew Stafford also turned down season one of the show, as well. I guess he would have been the uh, 
Would it have been the Kirk Cousins? Would he have been the Mar- probably would have been the Mariota? So the, they they asked, well, who should be season two? You guys, you know who jumped up immediately and said Dak Prescott, Trayvon Diggs. <laughs> He's been active today out in the uh, in the Twitter streets. I wonder why. Hmm. But yes, the <laughs> yes, the X Street, oh, not Twitter anymore. The X Streets. Thank you, Elon. But yes, so that's where you're seeing. You know, maybe Dak will be is going to be followed by the, by the cameras. Who knows? We shall see. But you know, that's the update on the quarterbacking side of things. I guess I'll I'll take a look at the thing real quick here. Tim Pinnell, uh, Pinnell said Kirk Cousins won a playoff game. Oh, has he? Yeah, he's won one game. Um. Yeah, we're not going to make training camp, guys. Sorry, Scorpio's uh, in the house. He said quarterbacks be demanding more money. Teams are going to just keep – it's going to be a similar thing as running backs with the other reason, the other direction, because you get a guy for three or four years, cycle him out, and grab the next guy and roll the dice with him if it gets that crazy. But if you want to win a Super Bowl, you're going to have to, like, pump the money, pump pump it up to the quarterbacks like an Aaron Rodgers or, you know, when Tom Brady was around or, uh, you know, Mahomes. Uh, people are still going to pay the big money for these quarterbacks. Yeah, quarterback. The quarterback market's got the mother balls. What's up, Clark? Kent's going to be at the at the field and Oxnard out there. I can't wait. Tomorrow we're going to drop in a whole bunch of videos from the from the uh, from Oxnard. You want to catch it here, guys? Right in your face, and we're going to talk about it. You know, the video will be right there. It'll be like on the field, and we're going to give our two cents as each clip comes through. So, um, yeah, Herbert got more guarantee money than Mahomes. Mahomie, yes. Uh, Thomas Garrett said, "I saw the documentary at the gym." Yep. Great stuff there. Now, no Netflix at YouTube. <laughs> new budget, new media, said Stephen White. Uh, Colleen Case. And don't forget Fields. Let Netflix follow him in high school. He wants a break to focus. Great point there, Colleen. Thank you for that insight there. I so, uh, I know, uh, I, I think Russell Wilson was one of the uh, rumored possible QBs, hmm. by the way, for this next season. Just kind of throw uh, that half, out there. A handful of guys there. Trayvon Diggs is pushing good old Dak mm-hmm. Prescott. So, now, Jangly Echoes also said that, you know, basically... TLDR, uh, the Patriots way, is the way to build kind of a long or longer lasting uh, franchise that can be successful like year after year after year. Hmm. So you have to remember, the only team that has managed to come even halfway close to that is Kansas City. But do you know Hmm. why? Because they draft, you know, they got their quarterback basically from day one and had good coaching basically for him since day one. And he also happens to be an incredibly talented guy. So... You know, and, you know, there's other factors. I'm very, I'm simplifying things a bit. But, yes, we have a very talented quarterback, in my opinion. And obviously not as talented as Brady or Mahomes. I'll agree. But part of it, too, is the fact that we did not have the type of coaching support for Dak up until now at this point. You know, remember, McCarthy's and we're still hope, been we're still, here. We're still hoping Yeah, McCarthy. this is only McCarthy's third year here. Third? Yeah. Yeah, heading no, no. into the third. No, fourth heading into year. the fourth year. Yeah. He's been here three years now. Yeah. So, yeah, just saying that <laughs> if if we want to do something Patriots-esque as far as having a team that consistently is good and dominates in that way, this is certainly the first step there, like towards that. The, the problem is it steps too late because if you wanted to keep this team the way – we had to get these, these Super Bowls or these runs had to be done three, four years ago. It didn't happen. I so know. now we're a little behind the eight ball here at the end of some of these guys' careers, but you got the defense. See, you can hang your head on that because the defense is the cornerstone of this team. You keep that rolling, we can stay in, the, in every single season and make a run at any time. Yeah, and I think defense. a lot of people, and, I, and yes, I know the whole, you know, Brady took pay cuts or whatever one. Brady was married to Giselle, yeah. who out earned him like <laughs> more than double. We've made jokes about that in the past saying, Dak's got to find a rich, he's got to find a rich, rich. Uh, wife. Yes. Somebody who's much wealthier. Uh, but than outside him. of that, I think people forget how much the Patriots organization itself basically did a lot of backdoor deals with Tom Brady. Hmm. Uh, you know, he has this whole like facility out there and like all this other stuff. So basically, it was kind of like I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. So yes, Brady on a contract basis maybe didn't make as much, but the facility and the organization itself still helped facilitate yeah. him making a lot of money through other side deals True. Uh, directly with For the organization. Him, yeah. Dak's not like building a brand new the star at Frisco, the Dak at Frisco or whatever, <laughs> and and trying to monetize it or whatever. I don't know. Just anyway, back to you, baby. Oh, are we good? All right. I don't know if we hit the comments. So again, this is not a Dak stream tonight. This is just the Dak portion of it, right? We're done with Dak. We'll have a lot. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about with Dak in the future when he throws, you know, two interceptions in a practice where he's forcing it into triple team on purpose, and people are gonna say, "See, Dak sucks." Smack. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's not 
that's silly. People are judging his interceptions back in OTAs. Are you kidding me? Come on. So anyway, either way, it's just people that want to hate, they're going to hate. They're going to find ways to hate. Let's see if anybody hates this, baby, because what is our question today in the poll? Because we do have a special player that's now tagged onto this team for a good chunk of years, Trayvon Diggs. So, that's right. And so far, with 64 what's the question? votes, how do you feel about cornerback Trayvon Diggs' five-year, $97 million extension? With our Dallas Cowboys, 86% said love it. Mm. It's a great deal for yeah. Dallas. I think probably the most unanimous vote I think I've ever seen here in OCF. <laughs> 11% said it's okay, I'm not sure. 3% said hate it, wow. Diggs is overpaid. Those those 3% are probably Eagle fans because they're nervous. And Eastside Herald. Gonna, is one yeah, Eastside. Look, let's break it down. First and foremost, let me just throw up Trayvon. Sorry, baby, but Trayvon Diggs is in the way because we're putting his video there. I'll, I'll, I'll allow him to replace <laughs> me here temporarily. He's allowed his interceptions, but we'll just cheat, see that in the background. Two-time Pro Bowler, Trayvon Diggs here after four years at the Cowboys. Finally are finalizing and finalized a five-year, $97 million contract extension. So let's talk about it. What's involved in this? This is important here. I don't know if you guys heard this, but the deal includes $42.3 million of that is guaranteed. It's important to note, and I'll explain to you shortly. Uh, But Trayvon Diggs has 17 career interceptions in his four seasons. He's only 24 years old. Remember, he came in the league at 20 years old. Stefan Diggs' little brother, guys, cashing in big. Who makes more money between both of them? I don't know, but they're making a lot together. Trayvon Diggs also gets a $21.25 million signing bonus. And the deal can be worth all the way up to $104 million with incentives. Officially now, definitely one of the top five uh, highest paid cornerbacks in the NFL. And it is a massive deal, guys, for him. Um, Diggs is going to be receiving... $19.4 $19.4 million per year. That's the number that goes to that $97 million. It's about, it's, it's exactly $19.4 million per year is the average of the new money, of the extension money, right? The five year, you take the, the 97 divided by, the, by, by five and you get your numbers there. Like I said, 19.4, which is obviously, a, you know, still a good chunk of the, of the salary cap, but it's not that much because when you compare it to the market, yo, you got to compare the market. People hate it. You got to look at the market, guys. And you look at the market, he's not the top of the, he's not on top of the, he's not the highest paid cornerback. That's a great deal by the Joneses. I'll give them the, I'll take the clown show away from them for this moment because that saved, that was a unexpected deal, I'll say this. So let me explain, guys. Right now, he's tied for fifth highest paid cornerback in the NFL. Fifth. Tied with Marshawn Lattimore. Also, right now, making. $19.4 $19.4 million, the same exact as Marshawn Lattimore from the Saints. So the Cowboys were able to get Trayvon Diggs basically outside of the top three cornerbacks in the league, which is mind-blowing, I think. I was surprised. So I'm, I'm obviously thinking this is an A-plus for me. In my mind, a great deal. And listen, it gets better. You know why it gets better? Because look, look at the guys in front of him. Right? Tray- Trayvon Diggs tied with Marshawn Lattimore, $19.4 million a year. Marlon Humphrey, $19.5 million. Jalen Ramsey, $20 million. Denzel Ward, $20.1 million. And Jari Alexander from the Packers, $21 million flat. All these guys are in front of him. Now, I will say one other thing. Some people, I've heard some people say for some reason, well, he's actually the highest paid uh, cornerback. That's that's a lie. you know. And the reason they're saying that is because they're trying to say that the hundred and, uh, what is it, $104 million total with the incentives Makes him the highest paid. That's that's he's actually the second highest paid. He'd be still behind Jari Alexander, and I don't know if he's got ex, you know incentives in his deal as well. But the point here is Trayvon Diggs, whether it's with incentives and which is silly because are they going to hit the incentives? We don't know, but we know that what they're definitely going to get the definite average. The way you divide this up, he's the fifth highest cornerback, you know, yearly average in the NFL. And here's one last great thing, guys. One last bonus about this cherry on top on this deal. Remember, this is a five-year extension. This year, he's still getting like 4. 4.3 million. So you add 4.3 to this 97. Listen, guys, you divide it by six. You're getting this number at around a little over 16 million a year for Trayvon Diggs in the next six years. That's fat. That's fucking fantastic. Now, here's the other good thing. The last good thing about this: six years. Are we going to really have Trayvon Diggs here for six more? Years? We're gonna, he's going to be at the Cowboys for nine years total. You know, I, I don't know about that, but the guarantees, I'm going back to that, guys. The guaranteed money. 
is at $42.3 million. You're looking at a little over two years that he's guaranteed to not be cut for the Cowboys. See, only two years, guys. Again, if something happens, knock on wood, nothing happens. No injury, no downside. Of his, And he's great for six years. That's fantastic. But if there's anything that happens after two and a half, let's say after three years, the Cowboys can make a move and lose very little, a lot less money on the Trayvon Diggs uh, dead money or, or not kind of dead money, but any kind of guarantee. There's no more guarantees left. It'd be whatever money the Cowboys chop up and push forward, maybe you know into the future, make it in bigger hits in the future. It's very possible the Cowboys will do that. So they'll, t- they'll set to pay something, but the guaranteed money would fall off, l- literally into his third season from this year, from his co- third year, from three years from now, third year from now, this year, next year, and then the following year, 2025? 20 and 2025 is his last kind of half guaranteed year. Now I don't know other details; they might have something for injury and other clauses, but right now it's a steal for the Dallas Cowboys. In my humble opinion, Trayvon Diggs did a great thing here, at working with us on this and whatever it took to get it done. I think he's earned it. I think that, you know, it's a great deal for the Cowboys team. And, hey, Clown Show didn't get too clowny on this one today. They did it all behind anyone's... Listen, all the reporters, all the analysts, no one knew this was coming. So you got to give Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones credit this time. We have to. Here at MCF, we're giving them credit for once. For keeping their goddamn mouth shut and getting this... Th- See what happens when you keep your mouth shut and do your due diligence behind closed doors there, Stephen and Jerry? You get shit done. So, I love this deal. I'm seeing that most of you guys, pretty see, almost 100% of you guys love this deal. I am overall a fan of the way that we seem to be structuring a lot of our newer contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the perfect balance of skeptical fan <laughs> and Choctaw Montana 808. Ooh, so perfect Montana, balance. Perfect yeah, that's balance. a great one, two punch. Montana, congrats. Back in it. We're still waiting for the uh, for Montana to get back in this star level. But we also got skeptical fan just dominating the gifting world here. Bow down to the man staying skeptical. Much love to you as he now. I think he's, I'm going to have to check this, but I think he's getting closer and closer. He's he's continuing to creep closer to Marco Seppi. Definitely. He's he's about, you know, 10 back or something, but he's closer. He's getting there. So, baby, what, I guess I would say, what do they say? Yeah, skeptical fan. Always go Cowboys. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to right here. I just want to make sure it's marking yeah. it to Montana. So, no, and like I was kind of saying there, I'm just a fan of how we're structuring our contracts in general. I think it's the perfect balance between we are paying players what they have earned and also doing the it future, in a way yeah. that balances the team's current needs and stuff. I, 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 I think it balances know, the future. I thought Trayvon's contract was going to be almost like a market resetting type of thing mm. just because mm-hmm. of some of the stats that he was able to put up, some of the expectations that maybe, you know, the projections, I should say. But kind of like I, I was kind of discussing with Mr. MCF behind the scenes, you know, maybe this past season, having a kind of rougher year, relatively speaking, you know, maybe that played into the Cowboys' favor. Like, you couldn't take away what he had already done or his actual talent. Kind of or balance them out a little do. bit, you know? But the fact that he... he took a few stumbles or whatever maybe it allowed the cowboys to have a little more negotiation room with the way that things actually broke down good point so, and, and it's good without yeah, disrespecting great point. him because i still think the contract is right up you know right where he right where it should exactly, be exactly like he earned what he just or he got what he deserved and, and, I, and i think <laughs> it's also great to see the way the cowboys structured this deal exactly a fair deal yeah, I think a fair deal across the board. You know, Cowboys get a deal, and he gets a deal. Look, I think across the board is the way you. Oh, sorry, the way you look at this. Yeah, I think he's skeptical. Yeah, much love, Mister Skeptical. By the way, Mark is down to thirty-seven points. He's in first place, but he's in thirty-seven points in the stream, boss. But I, I was going to say that the way the Cowboys structure a deal for the future is a good idea. Don't you just give all their money blindly away, and you, you got the guarantees is really what the years are on the deal. It's really a two-year extension. We got we got Trayvon guaranteed for three years, maybe another three. On top of that, mm-hmm. right? So, if the, you know, the Cowboys hit that lever every single offseason, right, when it starts. And if they want to, I'm sure that's put into this deal as well. If they do whatever they want to do, they drop his hit next year and they push the money forward. That's what the Cowboys will probably do to open up cap room next year, the year after, and the year after. You do a Dax contract. You do it every contract. That's what the Cowboys have done. Now, the, when you don't do that with the deal, you can cut the player earlier. That's what you saw with, you know, Amari Cooper. That's what you saw with, you know, with Ezekiel Elliott. We held back on pushing his money forward because we knew they were going to get rid of them the next year. So that tells a lot on what we're going to do with, like, a Trayvon Diggs when it gets into his third year of this current, you know, three years from now, we'll see where he's going to, what the Cowboys do. Do they give him, do they, do they give him that guarantee and take and roll that money forward again, or do they not? If they don't, then he's in danger. But that's three years away. We're worrying about number seven right now. And yes, yeah, don't tell anybody. 
I'm telling you guys, so a top five else. cornerback in the NFL, everybody he's getting paid the money. about seven right now. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's going to take it home <laughs> for six on the extra point, which means seven. We'll see. So I love also all the kind of uh, side comments and things like that, basically saying, all right, now it's just time to get his brother in here. <laughs> hey, soon maybe, but not right now. That's not happening. Not not now. I mean, the Cowboys have no money. They got to get C.D. Lamb put in here, right? So listen, let me finish really talking about about Trayvon. Oh, by the way, Scott, that I saw, he said, yeah, replacing the two we lost yesterday. Thank you, sir. I think we're definitely in the new level of like the highest right now. I think we got the highest we've ever had collective group here when it comes to the membership club there. So appreciate everybody on that. And, uh, you know, the more we grow, the more we can do, the more perks come around the corner. We can't wait to the regular season when the emojis are a full blast every week, you know, pointed towards the team we're playing the following week. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that, like we did last year. And we're going to do it next year as well. So, hey, let me finish up with Trayvon Diggs. Hopefully, he's going to have a bunch of great years here. Trayvon Diggs, again, this contract extension. Um, he had, again, 17 interceptions since entering the NFL in 2020. But, you know, he's tied with J.C. Jackson for the most interceptions since 2020, since he came in the league. So he's the number one interception guy in the NFL right now, tied for first since he's entered the NFL. And oh, another little number here, that's 2020. What about 2021 when he had his big jump? Trayvon Diggs, since 2021, has 14 interceptions. The Vegas Raiders, since 2021, have 12. Like the team? Like the whole team. Okay. Trayvon's got more interceptions than the entire Vegas Raider team the last two years combined. Now, like I mentioned, guys, he's playing 2023. He's playing this season on the $4.3 million rookie deal. So when you add it all together, it's basically $16.9 million per year on this deal for six years. All right? It's a great deal. You can't beat that with a bat. And this is the Cowboys' first proactive, like the first deal they went out there and said, let's get it done since 2019. I know we had some other guys. We had a, was Lel Collins and Jalen Smith. But we had Ezekiel Elliott was the final of those. And that was the last one the Cowboys went out there and went and got done. The Cowboys don't want this to be over with when it comes to making deals. Obviously, there's a couple guys left. CeeDee Lamb, who's now eligible for an extension with the Cowboys, he actually tweeted out there at Instagram and, you know, had a picture of Trayvon Diggs with the, uh, you know, at Trayvon Diggs and said, yes, sir, Ski. Mm. Seven. And, the, and with the prayer hands or the high five hands, whichever way you look at that. And then, uh, so, CeeDee Lamb knows he should be coming up soon. He should be next. Think about this world we're going to be living in, baby. Cowboys are about to have, by the end of this season, throughout the, before the season starts, or by the end of this season... We will most likely have sometime next offseason Dak getting at least $45 million or more if we extend him. Mm-hmm. CeeDee Lamb at least getting $20 million or more per year Sounds if we sign right. him. Trayvon Diggs, of course, getting the $19 million per year. Really, 16 when you divide it out. But all right. And edge rusher Micah Parsons at probably $30 million plus a year. Okay, yeah. The, uh, I was going to say, uh, Micah's contract is the one that needs to break the internet so to speak because that one will be a, a, a setter yeah that'll be a new but he has to get through this year yeah. injury free and healthy and still dominant exactly but i'm just saying like that's the that's the team we're looking at here and you know up next year you know micah micah i, I do want to hear about trayvon Diggs and what the chat has to say but micah parsons had an interesting little comment i think it was today or yesterday he said quote my this, this is about they asked him about his prime where's his prime he said my prime is now my first two years, I was learning and growing, but I think this year, I'll make a huge jump. That's that's the money we got to pay this man thirty million plus, and he's worth it. You know, assuming that he has another fantastic, you know, generational yeah, honestly, player he's not year. Wrong, just because remember the first year was even Micah. I think being surprised a little bit by Micah and the way that we used him and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So obviously, his second year, more teams figured out how to maybe adjust for Micah just a tiny bit more. Hmm. Uh, but obviously it's yeah. still, you know, I'm just saying, but I think it was more the general wear and tear of playing D-line that affected Micah Parsons the most. So, you know, third year is the charm. <laughs> uh, I want it to be 13. I, I want to see 13 years is a charm. It's hard <laughs> for me to wrap my head around the fact that Micah Parsons is probably going to look better this year than he did. You know, his first two years, yeah. which he already looked yeah. so good. Yeah. So, anyway, that's all. Deserves every single penny, right? Jing Echo said, Micah's going to become the highest paid defensive end in NFL history. Agree. He's that good. Agree. Yeah. He, like, Generational. Like, he is the, the, 
you know, real deal, board Holyfield. breaking contract that you can expect in the next few years. We yeah. have lots of very talented players, <laughs> but Micah is elite. Yeah. The same way that yes, I think Zach Martin is elite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hall of Famer. Even if Zach Martin is not doing it in such a flash way, I don't want to jinx it, but he's heading. I mean, obviously, if he continues having a season, a career like the way Micah is, I mean, he's going to be one of the best players of all time. Yeah. And I've that, seen the, the, the market, I've seen Lawrence Taylor in person. I've watched Reggie White and Derek Thomas, and you know, and I've seen all these other all these great pass rushers. And Micah compares with them. I'm going to leave it at that. At, at maybe better because of his ability to dominate at linebacker and edge. Nobody I know in the NFL ever did that. Cactus, just, just you said saying. the Cowboys' defense this year is going to be fire. <laughs> Hell yeah. I agree. No, think I, I said, Cowboys Nation, can you dig that seven? Yeah, you can dig it. Trayvon digs it. You know what? Finishing with Trayvon here for a second. Micah, not much on Micah or Dak today. We talked about them a lot the, the last couple of streams. But a cornerback, another cornerback was signed today, guys. Trayvon Diggs and Josh Butler. <laughs> oh yes, that Josh. Josh Butler. Butler, guys. So the Cowboys. Listen to this, guys. The Cowboys. Before even the press conference today, the Cowboys were working out cornerback Josh Butler, who played for the Michigan Panthers in the USFL. One of the better players out there. Again, later on in the day, after the press conference, after the news about uh, Trayvon Diggs, we got to sign another cornerback, and it was Josh Butler. Um, for the first time this year, by the way, the Cowboys are at ninety players on the roster. Perfect timing for tomorrow's training camp. Of course, one of them will be there, Zach Martin, as of this moment. I mean, maybe something happens overnight. You never know. But in the USFL, this player, everyone wants to know, what do you think about him? But listen, he's a probably, without even looking at a stat, without looking at what his numbers are, USFL, I'm just going to say this, simply practice squad slash camp body. That's where he's looking at. Unless he does something incredible, that's where he's going to fall. Mark my words. So in the USFL, let's look what he did. He was targeted 50 times, all right? And, and, you know, as a cornerback, he was targeted 50 times. He allowed 28 receptions for 363 yards and allowed four touchdowns. He had a, against him, a, quarterbacks threw at him, he had 104, they had 104.3 passer rating. I mean, he did record five forced incompletions. I just don't know what the purpose of this guy is. He He's going to have a hard enough time already beating even guys like Kelvin Joseph and Deshaun Wright. Camp body? At the very least. At the very a camp body and a future practice squatter at best. It's the only thing I can think of. Woo, another one. You know what else I can think of? By is that skeptical again? Yes, it is. Yes, it is skeptical fan. Who's the lucky winner? The membership man, the sponsor of the weeks. Woo! Much love back to back, like our nineties cowboys. You know his name is Skeptical Fan. Gifting another membership, NDM Boogie. The lucky winner. Woo, Shout much out love. to you. Congrats. Boogie. Appreciate you. Boogie Thank on you, down. Skeptical fan. The Navy Blue Crew. Appreciate you, of course. Yes, and Again, I got to add another one on. He's got 45. He shattered the record once again. And we're getting to a new level here. I think we're like 11 away, maybe 11 away from another perk opened by YouTube for us. Because you, because a skeptical fan single-handedly, basically, guys. Uh, appreciate him as always. Thank you, sir. And he is just that much closer. He is literally, I think he's like one more drop away. One, I don't know. He's a, he's one away, I think, from or one drop away from uh, jumping. I have to check the numbers. He might be there already, for all I know. Either way, much love to the man staying skeptical, skeptical fan, and congrats to NDN Boogie and the Navy Blue Crew. Now, um, looking at the rosters, looking at this at, at the way this breaks down, to me, this guy didn't do good. Was not a very good coverage cornerback. In the USFL, what the fuck's going to happen in the NFL? Was he a great special teams player? I dove a little deeper, guys, and Cowboys signed this ex-USFL standout. You stand out there, and of course he's made this training camp roster for now. Josh Butler, what he's going to do is this. First and foremost, he adds depth beneath Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, Jerron Bland, Jordan Lewis. He's, again, did great with the Michigan Panthers for the most part. Again, the numbers weren't too good analytically, in my, in my opinion. But he's thrown into the cornerback competition. He's going to get a chance to prove himself at the NFL level. Again, he started off in Michigan State in college, guys. He went from there to the USFL. Spent five years with the Michigan Spartans. He was redshirted his freshman year. Finished his career there with 25 games played. He produced 52 tackles, 35 solo tackles, and 11 pass deflections. A lot better in college than he did in the USFL, it feels like. So you got to look for him to kind of really, the only way he's going to win a spot, it's not over those first four I just mentioned. He's got to battle guys like Nashawn Wright three years ago, third round pick. Three years ago, second round pick, Kelvin Joseph. He's got to battle him. Among other rookies like sixth round pick, 
Eric Scott Jr. from today. So again, nothing like a guy aging like fine milk. It's a battle for Butler for sure to make it onto this team. That's Kelvin Joseph, and Sean Wright, and Eric Scott Jr. Those are our fifth, sixth, and seventh cornerbacks right now. Don't forget C.J. Goodwin in the mix. I mean, I'm just saying they got a lot of guys fighting. I mean, good luck to uh, to Josh Butler. I shouldn't really spend too much more time on him. No offense, but he's got to show us something to be able to make the practice squad. <laughs> So, again, the Cowboys are basically dipping their toes a lot more often. You can see last year we got uh, Turpin in the USFL. We got now Brandon Aubrey, the kicker, right? So, you know, we'll see what happens with this USFLer. Don't put your eggs in one basket with this guy. Don't hold your hopes uh, up for this guy. He's just a camp body practice squad guy. I think at best. I think. Uh, uh, camp body is, is the worst because he gets cut. If you don't make the practice squad. So that's my guess. Any thoughts out there? Maybe I'm going to take a break. I, a lot of talking. I still got a lot more talking to go. Yeah, he's 5'11". Yeah. yeah. Right, so yeah he's 5'11", less than 180 pounds of Cactus D. Yeah, I... What's the purpose? What are, I, What's the use of I'm, him? That's a camp body. Big Dally 604 said it. That's not good. Camp body. I just want... I, I, so my, can we get I, a better I, camp body than him? There's got to be a better camp body. I mean, all he has to do is... <laughs> I know, Stanley Special teams? Pretty. Is he going to be special teams guy? And I'm assuming so. I guess, but... He's little for special teams. Into the whole, yeah, if we're getting into the whole special teams versatility, I still feel like, yeah, there, there's probably someone who can give you even a little bit more there. Hmm. So... Agree. Agree fully. But yeah, just... just right, so, yeah, he's we're basically uh, all on the same page that, here. If I say camp body enough times, maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe he'll appear behind me in the mirror the, like Biddlejuice. <laughs> the, th- the problem for me... I'm hearing, you know, again, I'm not going to say who it is. I just hear a lot of people, like, really hyping this guy up. I'm like, really? Calm, calm down, guys. Calm down. Look at our team. We're stacked. Don't worry about this guy right now. Let him earn it the by showing. Let's being back at some people's, I know. Uh, you they, know the, the delusions are higher. But the point is, is that, look, someone like Malik Davis last year, I wanted to watch, and he made, he earned its spot from a from an undrafted perspective there as a running back undrafted from Florida. That's what I'm talking about. Like, this, this guy would have to, have to flash off the screen. And off the page, you have to say, okay, this guy caught my eye multiple times consistently like some of those other guys did. And then you can start saying, okay, where does he fall into our roster? Is he just a good practice squad guy? Because that's probably what's going to happen, even if he does his best. So, And yes, just, Mike McCarthy is very different oh than yeah. Jason Garrett. Oh, yeah. Very, 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 very different. different. Thank now, goodness for that. <laughs> now, as we go, before we get to the finale, which is, uh, you know, the Jones show there with Mike McCarthy and talking about, you know, kind of the, the – the, the, the whole press conference of this lead-up to training camp. We got to talk about some kind of roster. I don't say roster. I guess it is a roster move, but roster moves and updates on some of our most, you know, important players, like Zach Martin. Quick update on Zach. Zach is not back at the facility. Again, he didn't show up yesterday. He did not check in today. What does this mean? He owes $50,000. And tomorrow, if he don't check in, Another $50,000. And it keeps going until he checks in. So he has not checked in. All the players checked in today. Did physicals. That's important because I'll explain what happened there. The PUP list was also expanded. But Zach Martin, guys, of course, unhappy about the lack of interest by the Cowboy team to restructure his contract. Well, you know, I know maybe you have some quotes from Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones about this situation. Even even uh, Mike McCarthy. You know, we can hear what they say and how they feel about it because they were very tight-lipped, which means that they're probably busy working on something right now. They're not really talking about it much, which is, again, I will say this, it's a change from the clown show. They usually talk about it all the time, all out their ass. So this time they were kind of serious and not talking about but it. But since something well, hasn't ha- you know, since something hasn't been officially you know, signed yet, there is still time for Jerry to fuck it up. Like We, we still mm. have plenty of time for that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, listen, the, he came and messed this up. He cannot. So, look, the, the thing is this, is that uh, he did not report for the star training camp, so he's, he missed today. What does that mean? Just right off the depth chart and looking at this, I'm going to tell you guys what it says basically off the Cowboys, from the Cowboys side of things. Opening training camp tomorrow, Matt Farniak and Josh Ball are among the Cowboys' options to work at first team right guard. Can you imagine Zach Martin? And now we got Matt Farniak and Josh Ball working there. That's not good. Um, I will say the one, th- big down the, the one thing we did see is. Josh Ball getting extensive snaps in the o- in OTAs when Zach Martin was just on the sideline. We saw him getting extensive snaps when uh, you know it, it, during the mini- mandatory mini camp. So you know in this whole spring, Josh Ball got the most reps at the right guard spot, and 
he'll be starting on that spot. I'm pretty sure Farniak might have to start off on the left guard spot because Tyler Smith might have to play left tackle or they have the option of going with Walesco at left tackle and leaving Tyler Smith at left guard. And, and you know, Matt Farniak probably goes in a rotation with Josh Ball, behind, you know, for that missing Zach Martin piece, which is a major, major, major. Did I say major? It's a major piece. Major. Yeah, so obviously that's the update on Zach Martin. Mike McCarthy, and this is maybe I know you have more information on this, so I guess I'm not even going to go into it, but the point is uh, Mike McCarthy did say that there were some players getting worked out right now. Uh, on top of just the regular physicals and check-ins, while, while they were having their, their uh, press conference, the Cowboys were basically having a mobility workout for five or six different players from the Cowboys to figure out where they should be, were they healthy enough, they passed the physicals, that kind of All thing. Right. And, you know, uh, he didn't announce this. After the, uh, after the press conference, we got the names of the guys that made the cut and is going to be there on the field day one and the ones that well, may not or are not. So let's get, it, let's get into this here because this is important. The biggest one of them all it starts at the offensive line. And we gave you the hint yesterday, Terrence Steele not on the PUP list. He's not on the physically unable to perform list. He is not on the PUP list. Yes, the big dog is out. No PUP here. Mike Mc- again, guys. I'm, I'm, uh, Terrence Steele with that knee is not going to be placed on the PUP list to start the camp. And again, uh, very ahead of schedule. He said he's ready to go. We talked about this. We've been showing you these videos weekly, and every week I'm like, okay, can- now will he get a lot of reps out there? Probably not. Maybe until the end of camp. But the key is, he really may be ready for Week One now. This could be that's the that's the goal. Week One. We don't care about preseason. Don't even care that much about camp. We just want him ready for week one and ready to go. So great fucking news, guys. Ahead of so ahead of schedule, he was cleared to play. I think that was even that surprises me. I don't know about you, baby, but I mean, I we kind of knew it yesterday. That, I, I was gonna say it to me. This is a uh, not completely unexpected when you look at like some of the injuries, situations, and stuff like that. Like, it's it's not completely out of the realm of possibility, but it is still a slightly pleasant surprise just because it is right on that border of is he going to be, you know, ready to go or does he still need, like, just a tiny bit more time. It also sounds like his healing went fantastic. Yeah, no like, brace, no, no brace, no for nothing for a, a better situation there. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the... So also the best goes situation. well for the future as far as, you know, if we do want to know how confident we can feel in Terrence Steele, I mean, hey, look at him bouncing back from this injury. Hmm. So, he's done Very that. good point. Uh, but yeah, uh, look, Josh Ball is going to be a, a skid mark in the history of the NFL at <laughs> Or the Cowboys, for that. sure. So, yeah. but look, that's about all you can the say. The good about news, the, Josh Ball's balls right but but we got terrence Steele, and he looks like he's going to be almost ready to go there now of course we got to get zach martin to make this thing right which i believe we will sooner or later but right now we can only worry about what we can worry about and that's terrence Steele. good news we got to take the good news here guys terrence Steele is not gonna be on the pup list fantastic what about other guys out there for our cowboys like holla how about tony pollard guys you see him here. We talked. We talked about this video. Busting ass out there on that right ankle explosion test and explosion rehab stuff. Here, was he on the pup list? Well, when we looked at it, guys, Tony Pollard fully cleared to practice in training camp. He is not going to be on the pup list. Tony Pollard and Terrence Steele both on the field, baby, ready to rock and roll day one of training camp tomorrow. So My great, heart is great joy. news is not going to wood. Nothing happens. I'm feel I feel good about Pollard's situation. That those those breaks heal stronger than they were before. So I'm good with Pollard. I think he'll be fantastic, and I'm looking forward to a season as the number one. How do we use him, right, in this West Coast offense with Soliari and Schottenheimer, kind of dictating the run game more? We'll we'll see. I'm looking forward to, it, but no matter what, Pollard ain't missing a day. He's out there now again. Do not expect him to be out there full time doing you know him and Terrence Steele probably be rehabbing a little bit, taking it slow, but. They'll be involved with everything. There'll be some walkthroughs. When the time, the you know, a couple weeks from now, they're full blast, guaranteed at the least. Maybe they're full blast next week. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Either way, great sign there. Another great sign for the Cowboys and you know our two major starters right there, Terrence Steele and Tony Pollard. Now, what about a backup named Jordan Lewis? What about a backup? Jordan Lewis, guys. Jordan Lewis 
We know about his fractured foot. He suffered that. I said yesterday, the Detroit Lion game last year, uh, and he on the interception, he fucking broke his, his, his uh, he got a pick, and then he they, they landed on his foot, cracked it. Deron Bland came in, dominated the rest of the year, and that was that. So this year, Deron Bland's going to be starting again, guys, at least at the very beginning for sure, because Jordan Lewis is going to be on the pup list. He is starting off on the physically unable to perform list, which, you know, it was ex- more than expected. We Again, we talked about this yesterday in detail, so not a surprise there. It just means that he can't practice officially on the field with the team until he's cleared to play and look to practice the word is not far away at all barring any kind of setback jordan lewis will be here shortly into training camp all right so so great so great sign to, to me obviously camp is important and all that but as long as he seems to be ready to go for the season that to me is the priority so which yeah. it sounds like he's good to go as far as that which is awesome. Agree, and Jordan Lewis, Jordan Lewis adds another, you know, a, a great backup piece. If someone, let's just say, is an injury to one of our, to Trayvon Diggs or Stephon Gilmore, you can move Bland to the outside, and Jordan Lewis goes right in there in the slot. No loss of any talent there, in my opinion. And then the same thing goes the other way. Like let's say something happens to Bland, you got Jordan Lewis going right in there. So Jordan Lewis is very important for the Cowboys. So is Deron Bland to pick up the spot if someone else falls, and if one of them fall, the other ones there take up that same nickel cornerback spot. So I. I'm happy about this. Jordan Lewis on the path to being on there on the field. Now, I did call him a backup because I do think he's a backup to Deron Bland, but he will be playing kind of the starter rotation stuff. There's another guy who's truly a backup, but the Cowboys draft him not to be one, and that's Luke Schoonmaker, tight end from Michigan. Oh, I'm going to talk about him in a minute. You, we're going to open up the, the, the dialogue lines here in a minute and for this one here. there <laughs> because Skeptical Fan with his $2 holler yeah. is asking... What's the janitor's situation? Maybe a red shirt? <laughs> Oof, man. Uh, we're going to discuss that here now. Let me update this board because he just jumped into first place. I know Skeptical wants to wants to uh, make sure he gets it. You know Mark jumps in here and he's going to, you know, he's going to power up. And, and but right now Skeptical of... is in first place. So much love, oh, but yeah, we're going to talk we go. about we're going to talk about tight ends here in a moment, baby. Yeah, go no, ahead. in preparation of the kind of schoonmaker situation, um I, I felt like I could remember a little bit of something about hearing that he he had like I'm just saying like a, a bit of a injury like you know back remember the plantar fasciitis well, I didn't say what it, what came out yet. in OTAs or whatever I'm just saying that yeah. you know I just kind of looked back at some of his uh, draft kind of uh, well, write ups and things like that and uh, he only ever had like a shoulder injury or something that well, senior year in Michigan and now again skeptical said so you know what plantar fasciitis in right. college well again that was what the issue was. I didn't even say what happened to him yet that's why I, nobody like, like I didn't say anything where he was he just said he's injured I just want to make sure everyone knows where he's placed but first skeptical the two dollar holler like you just said his situation we're gonna discuss it right now she red shirt. I don't think he's going to be redshirted, but it is a lot of questions right now surrounding Luke Schoonmaker. So, here's the deal, guys. He was with that foot issue, like you said, baby. He has that that uh, plantar fasciitis kind of issue that came up in OTAs and minicamp. Luke Schoonmaker was placed on the active NFI list. Mm. It's the non-football injury list, and you know that that means it wasn't a fo- obviously not a football injury. Something that came up, crept up, crept up. In him, or he had, let's say, a, a, if he fell off a, a motorcycle, that would have been like a non-football injury. We'll talk about it in a minute. First, let me give the big shout-outs. It's one of the newest Gs in the house. Jangly Echoes with another five on it. Shout-out to you, Jangly. He said, Jangly in the house. We're making it out of the divisional round with this one. And lots <laughs> of fire. Hell yeah. Listen, I'm with you. We got <laughs> we to gotta get to the conference championship. And I, you know how I talk about it. And beyond, damn it. And beyond. And then we got to get that six and beyond. Yeah, the the line for success has always been Super Bowl. Always. Uh, but we, we get to think, the conference championship, we can get say, to the Super Bowl. But I think a winning. lot of us have at least gotten comfortable with the idea of of appearing at an NFC championship game. You it's know crazy, what I mean? Like, baby, just I, give us a fucking shot. You know, it's I, I hate to have to say this. I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I feel my entire life watching the Cowboys, forty plus years. I have never thought of the conference championship as a Cowboy fan. I never thought of the conference championship being, yes, at least we made it there. It was always Super Bowl or bust. I know, I know. We were the 90s. It was the 80s, and I still thought that way. when We were horrible in the, in the mid to really late 80s. And then, you know, the 90s, it was like, I, I will take, I'll take only the Super Bowl, even at those bad years. And yet now, after 20 
26 plus years, almost in January and February, it would be 20 freaking seven. I'm literally saying, let's just get to a conference championship. And I can't, and that makes me feel dirty. It makes me feel dirty. I know who to blame. I mean, I hate to say it after, you know, after a good day, I, I may add, by the this crew, by the clown show, after a good day, still got to say that's where, you know, that, that's been the 26 plus years. That's been the, the foundational problem. And, you know, it leads us to this situation, right? The Luke yeah, Schoonmaker. I, like I said, I'm having a much harder time understanding why the yeah. Cowboys drafted and that's, Schoonmaker now. And that's the one. Now. Like, that, more, th- like as time, yeah. more time passes, the less sense it makes. And, and that's it. We got well. We got a, every day. It seems like it's a. Le, it was a worse choice, right? So again, Luke Schoonmaker, on the active NFI list, the non-football injury list, he missed already missed a bulk of the OTAs and the mini camp stuff. Had a boot on right with that plantar fasciitis issue, and supposedly this is the word here, baby. It predates the NFL days. Mm. I know you said you didn't see any kind of injury officially football wise, but but this was somewhere floating around there. So. This predates his time in the NFL, and he starts the the Cowboys' first rookie year here. Needs all that. He's the guy. He, those are the guys. Zach Martin don't need time in that field. This guy does. Luke Schoonmaker does. So he starts on the NFI list for the Cowboys. To me, let me just let me just let me give you my, my quick viewpoint here. It's a little concerning that Luke Schoonmaker oh, still yeah. still is not healthy. Oh, you see a little foot thing like this. You know, you'll got. Uh, he's a rookie. He's twenty five years old. He's an old rookie. You don't have many years left to fucking, you know, push. You get injured, you know, when you're 28, 29, and he's, he's 25. He's a couple years away from getting all the time injured. So I don't know about this move here, guys. And the injury news is compounded by the fact that he was an overaged prospect of being 25 years old. These things are irking me. He's the, already a bit of a spinster. Yeah. You, you cannot, listen, you cannot afford any more delays for this guy's career for this season. Luke Schoonmaker... Right now, the starter, Jake Ferguson. No diggity, no doubt. Schoonmaker is not the starter. He's not going to start week one. He might play, he maybe get some snaps, but Jake Ferguson's job is for him to lose now, that tight end number one spot. We kind of expected that, but we expected Schoonmaker to have a better shot to, do, to make a run at it. When does he get on the field? If it's sooner than later, all right, maybe, but I don't see him catching up. As a rookie, trying to beat out a guy who's already had a whole year under his belt, uh, Schoonmaker is a disappointment already, and we haven't even kicked off training camp. I'm just being real. I'm being honest, guys. That the Schoonmaker pick was the most criticized. That was the most criticized pick of the draft. We all know that Mark Hovsepian, who runs some of the boards here, he compl- we agree with him about the complaint. Where's Osiris Torrance? That's who maybe should have been the pick, not Luke Schoonmaker, right? But I still don't think it's a time to freak out. Still, this is not something you want to see. This is not the fucking ideal situation for your second round pick. Not even close. I see the man, though, who's with the plan here, jumping up the board slowly but surely, breaking a, out of a tie, baby. Jangly echoes. You know what he said with his $2 holler? Hit me with it. He's in third place. It's Fergin time. Yeah, it's Fergin time it is. Fergie man, time. I, look, we better hope that Ferguson ends up having his own Jarwin-esque well, moment. George Kittle right? believes in him. Well, we hope it's true. <laughs> I still got to see it. But yeah, I mean, we got Ferguson now becomes front and center here with no Dalton Schultz. You know, Schoonmaker, you could basically erase him for now, you know, making any kind of leeway. Unless he goes out there and just blows everybody away. But, you know, it's incredible because I do remember talking to you guys and saying that Dak Prescott had him at his little retreat there in Atlanta last weekend. Luke Schoonmaker was one of the guys there. I'm wondering what's going on. The Cowboys just kind of kid gloves here. Maybe letting him in like after a week or something on the field i don't know i want listen tomorrow i know we're going to talk about the, what they said today but tomorrow mike mccarthy is going to be answering a lot of these questions we're going to be he's going to be answering the the, the you know schoonmaker question i think is front and center number one i think you got you know zach martin questions of course you got other injury situations and questions about terry Steele, other guys on this team just generally not injured related that is going to be asked and figured out tomorrow when you know before even the first practice goes on. Usually McCarthy goes out and speaks before the practice. And then the players speak after the practice. So keep that in mind, family. Uh, I want to know what you all think. I mean, this to me is a worrisome pick. And I just think Look, that no, Osiris would have been the better move. But this makes what should have been a, an overall solid draft into a, not only a painfully average one, but one that could have consequences for 
much later on. Because remember, we actively made moves to move on from certain players based off of Scootmaker. Hmm. Just saying. Like, we, we made roster moves and decisions and, and moved on from contracts or whatever. And it seems like, at least based off of our current tight end makeup, that the Cowboys have put quite a few eggs in that Schoonmaker basket as far as him being able to help fill in. Yeah. That, like, it's that basically going to be second, tight end by committee yeah. in a way. Well, it was going to be that way. That's that second, he's going to have a more dominant role in that. That, that second, that second court, uh, tight end spot is where I think they wanted to see him really at least get full blast. And now you're going to have Hendershot being that number two right now. Literally, I'm talking about the first day of camp tomorrow. That's what you're going to see. So in time, Schoolmaker should pass him up, but we'll have to wait and see. He's got to get out there and play. Now but they, I, I did want to ask you a question, though, baby. The fact that this was missed, uh, that's, or that's the fact that this was... You, well, I, I'm asking you because you're, okay. the, you're the one who actually spoke about this more. Yes. So when it comes to Schoonmaker, now I first thought about this and said, you know, this may be... Did the did they Cowboys miss his predating NFL history injury to that plantar fasciitis. And if if the media knows, obviously Will McClay knew. So the Cowboys knew that this was in the background. It, whose decision was? See, at first I said, did McClay miss this? Because that's on McClay. I was going to, baby, I was going to blame McClay. You reminded me that, you know, when did the injury happen? We can get confirmation here that it happened. But everybody knew about it before the NFL draft. So the point here is, this is a known situation that the, the Joneses, not McCarthy, not Quinn, not McClay, the Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones you know, duo, they are the ones that made the final call on this and said, do it. That's clown show to me a little bit there. So what do you think, baby? Yeah, no, and that's where I said, you know, I when we talked about this, I said I could have sworn I remember seeing something about the fact that he had some kind of situation, not quite like full-blown plantar fasciitis or something, but he had something going on there that the Cowboys basically just kind of dismissed or ignored. Hmm. But when I tried to look it up and I tried to find information on it, like I said, the only injury that I could find information on was his AC joint Shoulder, that senior right? year uh, hmm. that he got injured in like November, December or whatever. Hmm. Outside of that, I was not able to find any kind of confirmation that he was... Uh, kind of a, you know, in the plantar fasciitis type of way. Mm. So I so so I could not a hundred percent find confirmation of that, but I swear I do remember something about that. So I, I am gonna kind of try to keep looking these next few days, just because this is obviously going to be a developing <laughs> situation, yeah. and we're gonna keep our eye on Schoonmaker. But like I said, whether it was deliberate, willful ignorance somehow by our scouting department, which I highly highly doubt. Or if it was deliberate willful ignorance by our front office, which I do think is a, the more likely mm. of those two. Yeah. Either way, That'd I don't be think a bad it bodes move. very well. Just because, like I said, we put a lot of eggs in this janitor basket. Yeah. And man, and it, draft, what happens and, if one of the other two guys that is currently going to be filling in the schoonmaker role, like we're, we're up shit creek. McEwen, McEwen is the fourth guy. But th- this is, to me, this is just, uh, you know, a second round pick, draft capital wise, that's a big, that's a big that's risk a big to play too. with, to play around with. So clown show strikes again, but baby, I, I, I thought you were gonna hit up the the chat on on the schoonmaker thing. I don't know if anybody had any last comment. I don't know if we hit the comments on the schoonmaker thing. I want to take care of that dog, baby, if you don't mind. In a minute, uh, no, go ahead. Um, real quick, first of all, Burn Bar, <laughs> shout out to you. Make Burn. sure to hit us up, man. We just need your address. That's it. We'll, we'll send you the hat. That's all we need. So, let me see. A big Dow said, I think we moved on based on Ferguson and Hendershot. So basically, you know, that that was a bigger uh, factor in the whole uh, moving on tight end wise. So, but again, like I said, I agree. I'm not disagreeing that they weren't one of the factors into that decision. But to still think that Schoonmaker was going to be like, I don't know, the third head of that dragon. mm -mm. Uh, Clearly the Cowboys messed up there. So... Let me see. Uh, Esmodia said, Schoonmaker resembles Jason Witten to me. No yak action. Honestly, I I do wonder if that's one of the reasons why the Cowboys maybe fell in love with Schoonmaker because he does have maybe some kind of measurables on paper that remind the Cowboys of Jason Witten. Although, like I said, looking at his draft... Let me... uh, Actually, I literally still have it here. So, uh, super quick. This is just Bleacher Report. This is their scouting report. For Schoonmaker, I'm not going to get into every single thing. I'm just going to touch on some of the positives and negatives super quick. But the positives, he has a tall, lean build with room to add more weight. 
good speed, above average fluidity and explosiveness for his size, and an above average blocker with high energy. But the negatives, he didn't show too much ability to win the ball in traffic, below average play strength as a pass catcher, below average route runner, and a late bloomer with limited productions, which that's the part where I'm like, that doesn't sound very Jason Witten-esque to me, because that is one of the things that Jason Witten did actually have. He did have some, I think, above average play strength when it came to pass, you know, pass catching, and I thought he was in a slightly above average route runner as well. For a tight yeah. end, for sure. Yeah. So just, just throwing that out there, that that's where maybe in some aspects he has some, some Jason Witten-esque qualities. I know size-wise, I think yeah. he has the potential to fill a Jason Witten-like role if he bumps yeah, we, up we, a little bit, actually, which I think is maybe more what the we, Cowboys are hoping for. Yeah, we actually discussed the fact that it's kind of like you got an athletic guy like Ferguson and you got a guy like Witten who's a schoonmaker. But all this stuff is in hopes because right now – Schoonmaker and not hitting that field yet. So, again, I have nothing against him. I just want to see him perform out there. And the longer it takes, the more we doubt the pick made by the front office and Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and the crew there. But those are the two guys I think are the ones responsible for it more than anyone else. And that's the clown working show. I hate putting it up, but when they mess up, we got to call it out. And last Ooh, year, it was up full said, time. Another Jalen Smith. I mean, again, yeah. A lot of these second round, I know injury wise, you're looking at it that way. I don't think it's as bad as Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith was like definitely out the whole year. We knew that from the beginning. Schoonmaker, plantar fasciitis, but could it be something that affects him the entire his entire career? Is something that's going to make him continuously, let's say, getting worse and worse? We saw what Amari Cooper did right with that. Was good, great with the Cowboys, and he was on the field. But sometimes he was, you know, a little bit, uh, this, you know, slowed down by that. But in Cleveland, he had another good year too. So you can't overcome it, Luke Schoonmaker. I guess the Cowboys are handling him extra cautiously. I think we got enough Schoonmaker in the house, right? Yes. Because now it's time to kind of go into the. Kind of the, the the initial big news today was checking in Zach Martin, the PUP list. You know, I know we signed the USFL guy. It was not supposed to be Trayvon Diggs, but the the biggest news before all uh, for all of that stuff was uh, the Joneses and what they did today when it came to speaking in the state of the team. That's right, guys. State of the team press conference. Boom, right there. Uh, Jerry, Stephen, and Mike McCarthy there. Again, guys, the River Ridge Inn, which is where the Cowboys are staying, ready for the camp, guys. And if you look at the fields, just saying for the fields behind them, and I guess I should put that up too. I guess I don't know if I have that here, but if you put up the fields here, training camp, uh, I guess not the field, but again, going into the into training camp, you'll see these banners. The fields look very much improved after the Cowboys themselves made sure to make some upgrades out there in Oxnard in that field. This last after this, after, you know, in this off season, but after last year, they like we got to make some some renovations to this field. So that's great news there. Hopefully, less injuries and less tweaks. But when it comes to the actual homes around there, <laughs> remember the people that were pissed about it getting blocked. At least one homeowner already has uh, flipped flags and took the Cowboy flag away and put a uh, Kansas City Chief flag to represent there. Just in in, that's kind of funny, in anger in anger towards the Cowboys blocking their precious view. So, anyways, I thought I'd figure that I throw that out there now, baby. You got the the whole thing here about this press conference. I do want to say, uh, at the actual the media guide, you can get there, I, I order it online, whatever it be. The Dallas Cowboys 2023 media guide. You know, who's in the front cover. Dak Prescott. Also, our number one receiver, C. D. Lamb, baby. Nice, nice. <laughs> and one other guy on this list. Unfortunately, he's not a camp. Zach Martin. <laughs> Those are the three guys that we have on the front cover of our 2023 media guide. Sorry, they did that on purpose. That way, if you miss them, you just, just, <laughs> just look at Just guide. look at your media guide. You're like, okay, yes. there he is. Guys, today, of course, they, at around 1 p.m. Eastern, set your times accordingly there. I think it was 11 a.m. Uh, no, it was 10 a.m. Pacific time. Mike McCarthy, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones hosted a press conference, the State of the Team press conference, Training Camp 2023. And, uh, you know, mainly Jerry Jones, really, this was really, I would say, a very quiet, low-key, was not the usual kind of big stuff going on there. Big stuff came before and after. It was not during this press conference. So I'm glad I didn't go live today for this kind of snoozer. But I will also say that there was some interesting stuff, of course, as well. We, we combed through all the, the, the crap and found the good stuff. So, baby, Jerry Jones really opened the press conference saying, quote, I think 
we've got a chance to be a contender. I love opening that way. Oh, it's Jerry, props there. What else was said, my love? He said, I came to camp with the idea in mind that if we can have the kind of camp that we want to have, we have a team that can compete for the top spot. I don't want to understate that for sure because there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah, that I was, mean, yeah, I mean, that yeah, was it for yeah that. no, I, I, I hear you. No, okay, basically, Jerry Jones, very comfortable and confident. Cowboys are going to be a contender for the Super Bowl. So are we, but, you know, we always got to see it, right? Now, we talked about those new fans that, you know, the, not new fan, the, the new fan uh, tr- team now with the Kansas City Chiefs hanging a new banner, a new flag, and they're pissed with those tents, that VIP spot there. It's blocking the view for some local residents. What did Jerry Jones say about that, baby? Yeah, so he said, quote, we've invited them, it's in the residents, to come inside the area. They know as well as anybody how open and how friendly this is out here. We welcome them to come in and enjoy it. I'm very proud of what we and Oxnard have accomplished here over the years. To have this today be the culmination of that. There you go. I mean, he just kind of be nice. But, you know, he knows he, he knows he pulled a quick one on them. Uh, if you're mad, <laughs> hate from inside the tent. Yeah, exactly. Just so, fe- Here's the crap we're going to give you and enjoy it. Now, <laughs> That's, right. That's business for Jerry. Jerry is no stranger to, you know, media, glitz, glamour, whatever. The cameras. Yep. But... <laughs> he did comment on the NFL Films cameras that are following him around right now at training camp, saying, quote, I hope every fan in the country can see this and experience it through the coverage. That's one of the things the Cowboys are good at and have always emphasized. It makes it more fun for a lot of people. Does it take the place of being able to block and tackle? No. But does it add to more interest in blocking and tackling? Yes. Jerry Jones, always media savvy and out for every angle, free free advertisement. That's all Jerry Jones for you now. He's like, I'm doing this for the next generation of old linemen. <laughs> exactly. He's doing, oh, what a nice guy. Speaking of old linemen, Zach Martin, right? The first questions asked of Jerry Jones from the media was, what's the status of guard Zach Martin? Whether or not he checked in or not. Of course, he did say that Zach Martin did not check in. He was not there. But they asked him, you know, was there a surprise? Were you surprised there was no new deal? Uh, you know, I mean, the, the, that he asked for a new deal. Uh, and what did Jerry Jones say about this entire situation with Zach Martin? You got to rely on those contracts. You have to. It's just that you've got to rely on the integrity of your contract. Just real quick, and Jerry should rely on the integrity of the contract he signs when he cuts players that don't perform to his liking, or maybe they just he feels that you know we're going a different direction with scheme, or want, don't want to pay this guy that much money. Isn't that the integrity of the contract too, Jerry? Just saying. Go ahead. I'm sorry. He still spoke more about Zach Martin. Yeah, he said, I don't want to get into what we're doing here or not doing. I just want to say that he is in our plans. And I don't want to diminish anything here about his not being here today or not being here today. It's just something we don't need to discuss. And I don't need to discuss for the benefit of all of us. Just not going to discuss any of our players' agreements. We certainly have great communication with, frankly, everybody. And so not necessarily any surprise at all. But if we won't be discussing any of the football business aspect of this thing with any public comments. Now, of course, right afterwards, shh, don't speak on it. But yes, Jerry Jones knew we were about to announce Trayvon Diggs. So he was slick slick there. Stephen Jones also slick a little later saying some other stuff there. But, you know, <clears throat> to me, when you rewind it back to Zach Martin, Jerry Jones to me offered a very... I guess he offered a lot of praise for Zach Martin, how you know good he is, but he didn't want to comment it. Why? To me, the intent is clear that you're working on a deal mm-hmm. as we speak. If he says how much he really loves Zach Martin, Zach Martin's like, give me another million, give me another two million. Who knows? So exactly, I understand. Like, any any kind of heaps of praise that's just heaping on more in the money pile. Yeah. So he's just keeping the heaping of 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 of, of you know talking up a player the good to a thing minimum. Is Mike McCarthy. Doesn't give a flying fuck about that because he's here to coach. Mike McCarthy is... He's got one job and it's not worrying about (laughs) contracts and deals and all that. He's worrying about his job, Mike McCarthy is. Because, you know, he's definitely on the hot seat. So without Zach Martin, it's going to make his life horrible. What did he say about Zach Martin? He said, he's a great player. He's one of our team leaders. There's nothing but love for him. That part hasn't changed. This is a business situation Mm. and that's where it's at. Yeah, that's unfortunately the way they, that things go. Now, you know, you talk about the combination of linemen. We talk about these three tackles over here that, you know, all three should be starting. Is Terrence still going to be back in time? We know the answer. At least he's back in time for practicing, not on the POP list in training camp. 
Tyron Smith always is an injury waiting to happen. And Tyler Smith is a monster on the left side, so it's great. But what's going to be the offensive line combination? They asked McCarthy this, and he said they were going to, quote, start training camp the way we finished it in the spring. And what was that? The final spring the final spring practice featured Tyron Smith at left tackle, Tyler Smith at left guard. Of course, you know, Biotish at center. Zach Martin was not in, he was at practice, but he was not in the actual reps. We know Zach Martin's there. And the other side would be Terrence Steele when he's healthy. When he was not healthy, it was either Tyron Smith or in, in this last practice, it sounded like it was Matt Walletsko. So let's go, Matt Walletsko. We'll see if he can handle that. Now, you know, to me, Matt Walletsko is the active front runner because Terrence Steele will not get the first snaps there now. But he's the active front runner as the right tackle and really the swing tackle. To me, that's going to be Walletsko's job to lose. I'm watching that very hard-eyed right there. Just make sure I want to see him play well. We need to have that backup swing to be something we can at least count on for a game or two if needed. So, well, let's go. To me, he's the, he's the favorite in the right tackle for now in practice. <clears throat> we talked about the guard spot. If Tyler Smith moves to tackle, whatever reason, and, Ty, and Tyron Smith moves to right tackle, and you know Tyler Smith goes to left tackle, who plays that guard spot? Well, I already know Zach Martin, that's a problem, but it's, right now the, the front runners, like I said earlier, Josh Ball on the right guard, Zach Martin spot, and Matt Farniak <laughs> also on the right guard or left guard spot. So all these guys are possible. There's also Josh Ball being talked about for the for the left guard spot. And well, let's go play a little wet left guard. I don't know. It's crazy. I need some answers here. I think tomorrow we'll hear more answers or, or more questions about these kind of things uh, to, to specifically only... You know, Mike McCarthy when he's doing the, the one-on-one kind of pre-training camp uh, practice press conference. So I want to know some of these answers. I don't know. Just my opinion there. Now, um, I don't know if anybody has any comments in the chat here. and take a pause. I, I know that you are still, you know, we still have a couple more th- last things to say here. Frame Ripper said, pay Zach the sack. The only <laughs> guy who's earned his contract in the last 20 years. <laughs> so... I mean, it's it's hard to think. Like I said, it's hard to argue that anyone deserves to get paid more than Zach Martin. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, like he pay the man, pay line. the man, pay the yeah. man. And we already got a couple of cheap years from him. You know, like all right. Cactus, you said the front pay office him. can't show that they're soft. They can't <laughs> just make and break contracts. It doesn't work like that. So, mm. and, and again, they wouldn't be re making or breaking his contract or whatever. It'd be ex- you know either extending him. If they so choose, which I, I don't think is the mindset here, or just adjusting the money for his final years, mm. you know, in preparation of a no. hopeful no, but, uh, future uh, extension or something else. The, the extension is going to have to be weary now because after this thing runs out, he's going to be over. He's going to be over thirty-four years old, so we can't be paying him the top dollar at that point anymore. I think he knows it. Cowboys know it. But what he's asking for is the minimal switch. It's not even asking to be twenty million dollars. He's maybe seventeen, eighteen million. A year instead of you know, thirteen million, which is where he's at. So, um, okay, I just wanted to go through that. Okay, I don't know if we're caught up with the, most of the co- quick comments uh, yeah. in there. Uh, appreciate everybody, by the way, dropping in there. You know how to stop us if you have to. Now, it didn't stop. It did not stop there because it was. They were also talking about Tony Pollard holler, maybe they were talking about Tony Pollard, and uh, I think it was uh, what was it. Um, Jerry Jones, I think, mm-hmm. was the one. When it came to talking about Tony Pollard, Jerry had a couple of things to say, and I'm curious. Yeah, so first he, he started off oh. by saying that the franchise tag just fit the situation really well in regards to Tony Pollard, which, again, we've discussed at length here, yeah. why it works out that way. But long story short, if you got to franchise tag somebody, have it be your tight end because it's very cheap. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm just saying, like, as far he as didn't say that. Okay. how it works, no, I didn't. I, okay. I uh, no, I know. I, I just I think was, it was pretty uh, clear that was me talking. There. <laughs> I, I, oh, I got it. it was, did not sound like a Jerry Jerry Jonesism. So uh, Stephen Jones also uh, chimed in to say that we offered Tony Pollard a long term deal. Huh. So apparently, similar to the long term deal that they offered Schultz when he was franchise tagged last year, similar to Schultz, Pollard is choosing to play on his tag instead of signing said long term deal. So I think we can. Uh, Maybe infer something from that suggestion. <laughs> so uh, but uh, Stephen Jones went on to say as well, quote, we're going to play under the tag this year and respect that, and we'll see where we go moving forward. Now, again, I, I hear you're saying, I'm reading between the lines there, baby. You're saying 
Tony Pollard's out the door next year, like Dalton Schultz was. But you remember, at least the Cowboys seem to be implying that. I think. I mean, based I, they, off they, what they're doing. Yeah, they definitely won't imply it on purpose, obviously. No. But yeah, based off their actions, it seems very similar. I will say this though. Just like Stephen, he he makes it sound like he was so giving. We offer Dalton Schultz a deal. It was two million a year, but we offer him a deal. I'm just I don't know what it was. I'm just trying to say to you guys, it's called lowballing. We offered Tony Pollard a long term deal. It probably was like nine million a year average, which you're giving him ten now. So I'm I'm just saying like this is obviously you know I say the the, the Jones clown show BS, but we know it. We know that they're saying this because. You know they have to be cordial about this. So they, yeah, they offered him a deal. It just was a shitty one, and, and we know why. We, they offered him a deal because they don't a shitty one because they don't really want them unless they're for here for a shitty deal. At least not until next year when they have to pay more if, if they do want to keep them here. So you know Jerry again. I think that one of the funny parts of this whole entire kind of press conference was really the running back situation, the discussion, and Tony Pollard and all that stuff. But it kind of evolved. You talked about Tony Pollard and the long term deal. Mm-hmm. Stephen Jones emphasized increased importance in the passing game. He added that, you know, they offered Tony Pollard a long-term deal, but two sides cannot come up with an agreement. And then he started pushing the fact that they, you know, this is a quarterback-driven league, which a lot of you guys have mentioned in the Mm -hmm. chat. So what did Stephen Jones say about about quarterback-driven leagues? Well, he said just that. This is a quarterback-driven league (laughs) now. There you go, NFL. Throwing the ball is a big part of this game. It used to be 20 years ago it revolved around the running back. But 20 years ago, the running back might have been more important than the quarterback. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. Hell no. I mean, I'm sorry. The quarterback was always the most important spot. But yeah, I know what he's saying. You leaned on the running back more often in those years, but they weren't more important than the quarterback, Stephen Jones. Stop feeding me bullshit. You know that. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, Kenny, I'm sorry. So he also went on to say, I feel really good about where we are, not just in the intermediate, but in the long term. And we're very motivated to sign these young guys. Young guys? You know some of these young guys may be? Because he, he was asked about these guys. Terrence Steele. You know, we talked about it earlier. Let's wait on that ankle, on that knee one more year. Make sure he's good to go. CeeDee Lamb. I'm waiting for that one. Micah Parsons. <laughs> That's next year. And, of course, Trayvon Diggs is another name that popped in there. But, hey, he said he wanted to get some of these done. Well, we, we got another one done right after this press conference officially was announced. Trayvon Diggs, baby, getting that contract. But there's another guy that replaces Trayvon Diggs, and that's, <laughs> unfortunately, baby, the guy we talk about all stream, Zach Martin. <laughs> so now, yeah, we got we got one out the way. We got replaced, and now, now Zach Martin's up next. He's got to get his contract now. CeeDee Lamb's going to have to wait. You know, obviously, Micah can't get paid. Steele's not going to get paid. He's on a tender. Uh, you know, so really the loser is CeeDee Lamb on that one. And... Maybe even a little bit uh, Dak Prescott, mm-hmm. right? Possibly. So, look, I just uh, thought it was some interesting comments there, pushing the passing side of things and obviously being nice about pushing the passing by, you know, but also kind of throwing the run game to the side there. Now, I know they weren't done. The Joneses were not done, right? Because Jerry also kept speaking about, you know, the way the Cowboys, the way he feels that the Cowboys are going in 2023, 27 years we're coming upon here. More than 10,000 days have passed since we have won a Super Bowl. <clears throat> Jerry Jones, you're listening. So what was his comments about this upcoming season, what he expects from Dak and the, the offense, defense, and the team? But really, Dak, what's his expectations? So he said, quote, When I look at where we are with Dak, what I think about where we are with Tyron Smith, when I see what I've experienced on players that played great for the Cowboys that aren't here today, we need to get it done now while we got them. And I think that's healthy. I think that's healthy for everybody. I think that's the way that my competition is structured. My competition, the Cowboys competition. And so that causes you to really pop up in the morning and be ready to gnaw a leg off them. Oh, that's a Jerry. That, that, that definitely wasn't. Are we trapped that, in Jerry's saw basement or something? We gotta that, like chew our own leg off to get That escape? definitely wasn't your isms. That was definitely a Jerry ism. Yeah, that was definitely a Jerry ism. <laughs> so, and as far as Jerry's expectations for Dak, uh, to, to kind of pinpoint that specifically, Jerry said, What I expect is not the unexpected. What last year represented relative to turnovers was unexpected. I expect to see what we expect from Dak, which is don't turn the ball over and be protective of the ball. And that's. So there, there even is, Jerry is trying to say, like, last year's uh, pick situation with Dak was a fluke, and he's yeah. not I mean, like this normally. Listen, we could go this all day, but you guys know. We, we have the video up here. You guys can check it if you doubt. I know there's a lot of Dak doubters and Dak haters. 
and his Dak that are overly lo- you know lo- in love with Dak Prescott. We're just like Dak realists. He's good enough to win a Super Bowl. Case closed. He's a top ten quarterback in the NFL. Good competition or not doesn't matter. He's able to get it done with the team we have. He's been held back a little bit with the, I believe, with Kellen Moore and the Noah Browns and the receiver by committee shit that we've had him go through a couple years. So, in the end, yes, Dak has a lot to play for. He has, you know, he's on, he's got a lot to earn here. You can say, but because of you know the the way that the Cowboys are kind of, uh, you know, I think it's a simple thing. Do not turn the ball over. You know who's great at not turning the ball over? Rain Dakota Prescott. Mm-hmm. Everyone only remembers it's short-term memory. Last year, he had a lot of interceptions and, and, and he missed five games. Well, check out those interceptions. We got them out there for you guys. Like six of them were drops, tips, or wrong routes. <laughs> Not on Dak Prescott. But, you know, he's got to take the blame for those, right? So what all I'm trying to say is that number will definitely go down this year. Interceptions, fumbles will go down. It's going to be a West Coast style offense with quick throws, yards after the catch, and two or three reads, and then Dak breaks the pocket, uses mobility to extend the play. Boom, you got something. Dak's one of the best quarterbacks on that. He's one of the best quarterbacks on third and five or longer. He's we keep going. Now you know it's too bad that we sometimes we have hindrances like Jerry Jones using Kellen Moore to like yeah you know control the offensive kind of scheme you know and the mindset make sure you get the uses out of the guys you paid like Dak with no receivers and Zeke you know running him to the ground that's what the Joneses did when Kellen Moore was in power let's put it that way anyways um I'll stop there baby now uh interesting to hear again I agree with Jerry Jones one of the few times you'll hear me fully agree with Jerry Jones about we expect to see less of turnovers from Dak because of Dak's own fault because of the receivers because of the coaching whatever it is this will translate on the field to less turnovers by Dak Prescott. I agree there, and that's what we better see at the very least from Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, Jerry also uh, added in there as far as uh, Mike McCarthy, obviously now running the offense and becoming our play caller. Well, I don't think you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, so uh, Jerry had this to say as far as our that wasn't yeah, nothing to do with it. Yeah, I was like, what the coach? I, I, I said the my bad. Coach. Sorry. Yeah. So he said, and honestly. Not a big fan of this comment, Jerry. But he said, all options are open. I think what we've got in camp has a potential to be the answer. So uh, they basically, Jerry went on to say that the team is not spending every day to find something additive. So long story short, it's going to be one of these two guys competing in camp for the starting job short of some kind of miracle. Well, again, these guys, At least based on Jerry. these guys you're seeing right now, only Brandon Aubrey right now from the USFL you know, we got Turpin last year. Special teams that worked from the USFL. You know, I, I believe this will probably maybe work, right? I'm not. I don't know how much confidence I have. I got to see it consistently. His big hit is that the big hit on him is that he can't kick it from from over 50 yards. But he inside of 50 is fantastic. You know, he's got a lot of videos out there showing himself kicking it from 50, 55, and these three here from 60. So we shall see. He's got to do it in training camp. Of course, the other option is Tristan Viscaino. Practice squad, I mean, a guy at the bottom of every list of kickers. Yeah, I mean, Brandon Aubrey's going to win the battle, but he's going to be good enough to kind of be confident in. That's my big worry. Like you just said, doesn't sound like Jerry Jones going to be adding anybody new to this to this uh, team of kickers. It's going to be Vizcaino versus Aubrey, you know, crap versus crappier. I don't know, but we'll see. This is another long field goal and a thinner uh, field goal post here, and he's not going to He's very accurate. Let's hope it translates on the field Training camp, yeah. Preseason, yeah. Regular season and playoffs. Let's get knocked those through all the extra points. Let's knock through every single 50 and closer, you know. And, and hey, when we need that 53 or 57 yarder, we can see he can make them once in a blue moon here or maybe more than that. He never got opportunities in the USFL. He had like 20 kicks each year. So that was like one of the least in the league. But he made them all, basically, outside of a block or a 55 yarder. So I have confidence he'll be all right. He'll be good. Will it be enough confidence? We don't know yet. We, we shall see. But uh, I know this is one of your big points of contention with the, with the Cowboys. We've got to get a kicker. It's more important. Than they, and the Cowboys seem to be giving the the importance to, you know? Yeah. So, and uh, kind of uh, touching on now, <laughs> Jerry's comments as far as Mike McCarthy becoming the play caller officially for the first time, saying, quote, we're just at a point as we have evolved, and I think we have evolved over the last two or three years, that it was not so much about what Kellen wasn't, is about what Mike is. 
So I think we give ourselves a better chance if Mike has that kind of emphasis. It's an asset that we have that we need to use. So Mike McCarthy is an asset. Then they, you know, you know, Jerry Jones did not want to use. He wanted to keep Kellen Moore in power, and he had his kind of like direct line to the team on controlling who gets to play. Maybe not who gets to play, but he can who can he can influence to get to play. You know, a lot of Zeke to the ground running him. Dak doing it with no receivers. <coughs> That's Jerry Jones back there. I you know. Now he's given full power and control to Mike McCarthy, which is a very rare thing to do at all from Jerry Jones. McCarthy is doing that. And, you know, I do think that this is an asset we should have tapped into maybe a lot earlier in McCarthy's reign. So, hey, better late than never, right? Well, it's been three wasted years. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that. So, now we, I know that we, uh, we have, I guess, just a couple things left, right? And we we're mm-hmm. done with tonight's stream. Hey, we got through it here, baby. But uh, the culture of the team, you know, we know about Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, but what about Mike McCarthy's thoughts on the culture at, with the Dallas Cowboys? Because again, the, the, we, we uh, Dak's bringing in people trying to get this excellence of winning and this stuff. We got a lot of, you know, a lot of this kind of change of attitude from the Garrett yeah, a lot years. Of different mindsets, right? right? Those Garrett years hurt. So now we're trying to go a little bit more and spark it up a little bit differently. So what did Mike McCarthy say about the Cowboys locker room, the culture for this mm-hmm. team? saying, I think it's definitely the best of the four years. Um, He actually had dinner the other night with the Player Leadership Council. Mm -hmm. Um, McCarthy said, uh, they told me they felt this is the best rookie class of the last three years, and I kind of laughed. I'm like, you said that last year too. (laughs) But I feel great about our culture. So honestly, I love to see that this team is seems to be like fully embracing uh, the McCarthy philosophies. It's important when he's calling the plays, he's installing the offense. This is a major thing here. So it's a good transition here. It seems like he seems smooth, right? He's been here three years, so now it's his fourth year. So he should be smooth. You know, after two, you know, well, two seasons, but back-to-back 12-win seasons. Mike McCarthy, what did he think about, you know, breaking through? Because he believes we are ready to get to that next level. What did Mike McCarthy say about breaking through? He said, in order to break the door down, you've got to get on the front porch every single time. So I think we have definitely established that. It's about winning a championship. I don't shy away from that at all. Hell, everybody today should feel like they can win a championship, but they may not talk about it. We feel very strongly about who we are as a team, and we look forward to all of the challenges and adversities that's going to come. Mm. Now, you know, we hope they're ready. What about, you know, I guess you say the Cowboys being able to take that next step. I know he said one last thing about that. So they, said, can, they, can they take the next step? Yeah. So as far as like, <laughs> are they ready to quote unquote take that yeah. next step? McCarthy said, we all think so. Yeah. I feel really good about where we are. But at the end of the day, it is a process. Training camp is important. And we love what we've accomplished in player acquisition in the spring. Yeah, you hear that? So that is trades like Brandon Cooks, trades like Stephon Look, Gilmore. Outside, outside of the, the re-signings that we've had. Outside and of the draft player, Everything right? else gets like a 10 out of 10. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as. We kept the guys that were worth keeping. We paid the guys that were worth paying. We moved on from the guys that were worth moving on from. <laughs> we drafted pretty solidly. It's going to make her aside. So uh, I just, you're right. It's just a win across the board. Yeah, and you that's know, what makes Schoonmaker stand out. I think that hmm. much more. That's why, uh, at least to me, a clown show didn't get as clowny this year. But when they make a clowny move, when they're doing better, it shows up more. And again, look at the. These are some of what the player acquisitions we're talking about. We let these guys go in the middle, but look at the left and right, right? I mean, there's more guys even to this list, but Gilmore, Cooks. We we'll see if Adoga pans out. Ronald Jones as well. We've got a great long snapper there uh, with Trent Zieg. But on the other side, we kept guys like Pollard, Steele, Donovan Wilson, LVE, CJ Goodwin, Cooper Rush, Rico Dowdle, Dante Fowler, Tack McKinley, who, by the way, I think we cut him again, didn't we? I don't know. And Jonathan Hankins. Hankins, that's a big sign. And, of course, we brought in guys here for the draft. You know, we can, we've can we talked about this multiple times. But I'm just saying, like, when you look at the draft picks that we got, new acquisitions in this whole entire offseason, that's what McCarthy's talking about. You're looking at Mozzie, Luke. Well, that's a big one there. Demar and Overshone, who actually said some things. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, Junior Fajoko, Sim Richards, Eric Scott, Junior Deuce Vaughn, Jalen Brooks. And a bunch of undrafted. So again, I I think that the Cowboys, Mike McCarthy, de- no excuses for him. A lot, uh, definitely. It seems if everything works out with McCarthy, a lot less excuses for Dak Prescott. 
And then a lot less excuses for the offense outside of having that issue. I think if an injury happens on the offensive line, we're in trouble. Outside of that, no excuses. Tight end situation, the front office put him in that situation. Front office got to fix that. That's the, No excuses, but hopefully we can overcome that as well. Defense will carry this team. That's our identity on this team. Repping that star is the big D. In Dallas, guys. You know the yes, deal here. So it is. It was a great discussion, baby. I love that we went through all of that stuff and more on a, on a pretty long stream. It's pretty longer than usual because there was a lot of stuff going on. Tomorrow, though, it's going to be major in the sense of a recap. Tomorrow's going to be recap day here tomorrow, guys, on MCF. We're going to be talking about training camp in day one. It's going to be kind of walkthrough-ish. There's going to be some drills. We're going to talk about some cr- nice plays. Hopefully no injuries. But that's going to be the plan for tomorrow on our stream. But I'm telling you guys, and shit, and Less than 12 hours. Stay right here, guys. Hit that like for this for this live stream. But make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell to all videos because we're going all out of, a lot of videos going to be dropping tomorrow, guys. And you might not even get notifications for these live streams. So make sure you check back at the usual, you know, midnight time East Coast. And we usually go live 12, 1230 that's East right. Coast. So, again, that's going to be the plan tomorrow and the next 30 days. So get ready, guys. Buckle up. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And we're going to check out, um, you know, the video. We're going to discuss it afterwards throughout the day and to, and to every day that the Cowboys are on that field. I'm going to do my best to bring you, uh, you know, the action that matters for this team. And truly, my thoughts, along with your guys' comments in the chat and when we do our live streams at night, you know, your guys' discussion points. Can't wait to do this, baby. How, you feel good about this? I Like I said, I feel freaking fantastic about it. So, <laughs> Cannot very wait. optimistic. Looking forward to the rest of training camp and beyond. Getting ready for this season. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. With that, guys, let me go ahead and do the final shout-outs. But before I do, shout-out to the sponsor of the week. Yeah. Back-to-back Skeptical Fan. Ooh, he's also the membership, man. Two months in a row going for that three. Currently leading the board as well. Yeah, first place on the overall board. Man, he has over there with uh, 44. That's yeah. incorrect. He's got 45 gifted oh, memberships. There we go. And he, you know, of course, uh, did take that uh, current leadership spot from yep. the stream boss, Mark Hope Seppi, yep, who's Mark's currently prepping it with 28 points yep, there. Yep, he is on that board there. I think he's second. I mean, right now you got, uh, was it, Jangly? Jangly Echo is yeah. right behind Marco Seppi, one of the one of the ballers here. So, you know, new G in the house, making his mark. Appreciate everybody who dropped the love here today. You know, Boogie, I'm sorry, Bobby Bottles, who's in the silver level. Dwayne Broussard in the thanks. Maybe you dropped a little love. Jason Renfro, of course, in the cash app. Abe Shepard. There's Jangly Echoes. There's Skeptical Fan, who dropped a whole bunch of love for you guys to be in the membership and experience the emojis. So, Extra special thanks to Skeptical Fan. And, and also, before I even get out of here, I get, you, get, you do the shout-outs in there. Um, I think you're going to do them now, right? In a minute? Yep. So, but I did want to say shout-out to Justin Quarles, the Q-Man. The Cash App Man. Mm-hmm. Appreciate him. And Jason Murphy did drop another one in there. So he's got a Cash App of two. That's that leader right now for the next week. Will, will he take the crown from the Q-Man? We shall see, man. It's training camp time, and I'm excited. I know you guys are, too. We got five. We got to get that six and beyond, baby. Who's in the house? Last quick comments and thoughts while you shout everybody out. And let's call it a night here. Two hours of Cowboy Pack football information. Of course. Robert Hunt said, I know the clown show takes credit, but who's been putting together our team? They're doing a great job. That's Will McClay. So, Tommy Montoya, much love. Have a great night. We have Stephen White, Rolando Rodriguez, Cactus G, Frame Rippers, much love. Usa G. Let's see. Who else? Getting Money. Get money. Skeptical fan, Asmodeus, Jason Renfro. Hey, Rolando, I think that Jerry will pay Zach as soon as possible. Maybe it'll take a couple of days, but yeah, he'll he'll pay him. He'll pay him. We've we'll got other newsmakers like if CeeDee Lamb gets a deal, you know, Dak Prescott's always in the front lines. So, so we'll see so. APJR. We have Big Dal 8604. Jason Renfro, of yeah. course. Uh, Jangly Echoes. In the house. Welcome in, by the way. And that's actually as far back as I can go. So mm, That's a wrap, then. Baby, why do we do what we do? And guess what? No, no, don't worry. Don't even answer that. I got you. I got you. It's that navy blue. Oh, yeah. That silver, too. And that star 
over everything. Hell yeah, guys. Win, lose, or draw, good, bad, or ugly. And we hope for more wins than anything else. We always rep that star over everything. And baby, here are my Cowboys family for six years and beyond. Never forget the number one thing here now and forever. As always, go Cowboys. Cowboys. Let's get that six, seven, eight, nine, ten, dot, 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 and beyond. Thank you all for dropping the knowledge in the chat all night long. Appreciate the back and forth. That's what this is about. We learn, you learn, we all learn together. Also, we truly cannot do this on the nightly for as long as we do without the drops of love from above. Membership, super chats, thanks, buttons, you know, whatever, all the ways, cash apps, gifting memberships, right? Skeptical. All you guys truly cannot do this without your love and support. Mm -hmm. So thank you on that side of things as well. Memberships. But all good things must come to a close, and we our two-hour show is now over. So, guys, before we can drop out, clock out, relock, reload for tomorrow for another one, and day one, officially day one of training camp, look for these streams to be a little shorter, but you're going to have a lot more videos all day long, guys. So keep tuned in here on My Cowboys Family. Can't wait. I, can't, I personally cannot wait. I'm excited. I want to know what you guys think. So keep tuned in for that. Less than 12 hours away. And, guys, before we can officially drop out of here for the night, Baby, what do we got to do? We got to drop the beat. Oh, yeah. Beat's been dropped, guys. It's a wrap right here on M to the C to the F with the M to the C to the W right next to me in the place to be. John Jay University. <laughs> old rap, old hip hop. Guys, thank you all once again. Rocking here with us. My Cowboys family, six years and beyond. And we're going to go another six if possible. Hopefully by then we might have three or four Super Bowls by then, right? We can go and say, let's get that 10 and beyond. I hope, right? We can dream. That's why they call us delusional. But we can't help it. We're fans. And fans, they get fanatic. Fanatic fans also got to remind every single Philadelphia Eagle fan some basic mathematics, some basic knowledge, no matter where you are on this earth, planet, and or universe. Remind every Eagle fan. Five is always greater than one. It's that simple. They can also cry a little bit if they like F Philly. <laughs> Guys, thank you once again for dropping in here. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell. Leave comments in the chat if you're watching us on the replay. See you in less than 12 hours for a whole day of training camp. Shells and shorts, guys. There's not going to be any pads. No hitting till the 31st of July, but nonetheless, still exciting. Here, another one in the books, guys. State of the team press conference. Trayvon Diggs extension. What's next? What's coming tomorrow? Zach Martin? CeeDee Lamb? Dak Fred? I don't, who knows? We'll, we'll see. But we know one thing for sure. They're hitting that field, and I'm excited. And you know who else is going to be on that field? Yep. Terrence Steele and Tony Pollard. They're going to be out there rocking it. Not on the pup list. I love it. You guys here on MCF, thank you for rocking once again here with that navy blue, silver two, that star for everything. Never, ever forget the number one thing right here on my Cowboys family. Much love to everyone. We'll see you back tomorrow for another one. Have a great night. Stay safe. Peace out. And never, ever forget. Go Cowboys!